Huskers this season, already twice being named Big 12's Player of the Week. And he's got talented friends like Darren Dietrich, who averages 128 yards on the ground per game. Keeping pace with the number four Huskers will be a challenge today for the Missouri Tigers. But they have offensive talent as well in six foot five wideout Justin Gage. It's Nebraska and Missouri next. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler present Big 12 football this afternoon from Ferro Field in Columbia, Missouri. It's the Missouri Tigers in the Big 12 conference opener taking on the fourth ranked and unbeaten Nebraska Cornhuskers. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Drew Goodman. Last year, Missouri hung 492 yards on Nebraska before falling 42-24. They'll probably need the same kind of performance today because Nebraska, through one month of the season, is poised for yet another run at the national championship. And as I bring in my partner, Dave Lapham, let's talk about their Heisman candidate quarterback, Eric Crouch. Now, last week, he was pretty darn efficient. When you have more touchdown passes than incompletions, I'd say that's very good. Yeah, he was the complete quarterback last week against Rice Drew. His rushing number don't surprise me. Every six carries, he scored a touchdown on the ground. But every three passes, he scored a touchdown in the air. And that is phenomenal, completing almost 90% of his passes. Last season, he only completed 48%. This year, he's over 62%. Back-to-back off-season shoulder surgeries have loosened up that range of motion. He's getting the ball down the football field with tremendous accuracy now. Yeah, scary when Nebraska can beat you in the air right. as well as on the ground. Talking about quarterbacks for Missouri, they have two very athletic ones in Darius Outlaw and Kirk Farmer. And today, it changed because Kirk Farmer will start. He's been very good throughout his career. The problem for him has been staying healthy. No question, but he is healthy enough to go against Nebraska. Darius Outlaw got the first two starts, and Outlaw is learning the offense on a day-to-day -day basis and executing it better. But Farmer had a career game against Nebraska last year, threw the ball for over 200, rushed for over 80, and caught a 35-yard pass. 332 total yards. They want to see if he can weed that magic once again. But both these quarterbacks will play, and they're both very athletic. And Farmer did his damage in just three quarters because then he got hurt with a clavicle injury. Two very good defenses so far this season. Nebraska black shirts led by their middle linebacker, Jamie Burrow, one of the fastest linebackers in the country. Jamonte Robinson of the Tigers. Missouri and Nebraska up next in Columbia. 60,000 in the house as Missouri gets ready for Nebraska. This is a rivalry that goes way back. And the weather today is perfect. Temperature 58 degrees. You wake up this morning, you realize uh, autumn has arrived in Missouri. And the forecast is for great weather throughout the afternoon. Now, the series history has been dominated by Nebraska. 22 wins in a row for the Huskers. 12 straight here in Columbia. And the last Missouri win, 1978. You know, this is amazing, Dave. 26 conference openers won by Nebraska in a row. You have to go back to 1974 when Missouri beat them in a conference opener. Last time they didn't start the season 1-0. That, that's incredible. I mean, that is getting off to the right start within the conference or the, or the league, whatever you want to call it. 22 straight victories against Missouri as well. 12 straight victories here in Columbia. So it has been a tough task for the Missouri Tigers to match up. And there's their new head man, Gary Pinkle, after 10 years of great success at the University at Toledo and we asked him about playing after three weeks off. We have to turn this into positive. We, we have to get better as a football team. And so we did some things practice-wise. We were almost a little bit like spring football. We're a little bit more physical than you normally are. Uh, you do a little bit more against your, your ones against ones. So we tried to work on Nebraska, which we, you know, you, know you, you, you don't have enough time to work on them. But we also really thought it was real important for us to improve as a football team. Well, Drew, I'll tell you what, going once again against ones is, is one thing, but trying to simulate Nebraska's overall team speed is impossible in a practice atmosphere. Nebraska won the toss. They deferred. Missouri will get the football. Tay Jackson two yards deep, and his buddy Marcus James says, stay in the end zone. We'll take it 
at the 20 yard line. Let's take a look at the singular starting offensive unit for the University of Missouri. Again, Kirk Farmer will get the start. 6'4 and close to 220 pounds. He runs 4'5 in the 40. He's a tremendous athlete, but today just his fifth career start. He has battled numerous injuries the last couple of years. This is a very good offensive line, the veteran bunch. Dragi at the weak guard is the only guy who's not at least a two-year starter. Abron will get a lot of carries. He's physical. Blakely, they need to get involved. He's a very good tight end, but he has only one catch so far this year. And Farmer has Blakely, and he'll have about three yards before he is run over by Scott Shanley, the Sam linebacker. And let's look at the black shirts defensively. They're number four on defense in the country. Kelsey Clanton, Schlechten, Des Moines Adams. That is as fine as you get in college football. They're very good. Jamie Burrow's the leading tackler on this team. Number two is a true freshman who plays behind him, Barrett Rood. And in the secondary, great corners in Craver and Gross. They miss Willie Amos, the free safety. He's hurt with a hamstring injury this week. And Farmer will throw, and Tay Jackson catches it first down at the 31-yard line. Well, right away, Missouri coming out. Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator, spreading the football field and throwing the ball. Threw it on first down to Blakely. They flex Blakely, lined him up in the slot, not as a normal tight end. And he had Shanley out there in space, trying to trying to take him one-on-one, -on -one, able to get open and catch the football. Missouri opening it up against Nebraska. Well, they believe they have to throw the football today to win. First run for Abron, and it's a successful one. He'll get about four yards to the 35-yard line. Zach Abron's a physical kid, Dave, 5'10", maybe about 225 pounds. Yeah, he doesn't have much make you miss in him. You know, he's just going to run you over. He's not a guy that's got, that's got much wiggle, but he will lower his pads, sometimes ducks his head a little bit too much, and doesn't have great vision to see the hole, but he will thump you. Farmer on second and six, good looking play. for Gage, and that was a good play because he was doubled underneath the Will linebacker, Mark Vedrill, had him underneath, and a corner over the top. Well, Gage is going to get a lot of attention because he is, he's at the top of the screen, linebacker underneath Vedrill, a little pivot route to the sideline, and Farmer saw he was doubled right away. They got him out of pocket. They rolled him out to give a different launch point so Nebraska can't hone in on him in the pocket, make it easier for the offensive line. So since he was out of pocket, easy to throw it away without any penalty. Third and six. They need the 41. Nebraska brings five. They'll have a first down. It's Blakely. What a catch at the 45-yard line. Tremendous effort. That's why they like Farmer starting this football game. Farmer just gets gets ready to play against Nebraska. I mean, he's completed a high percentage, and he's thrown for a lot of yards, and this is what they like about him. He's tall in that pocket, very accurate with the football, threw it the only spot that his receiver could make a play on the football, and the defender couldn't. Pretty decent coverage by Jamie Burrow, but a tremendous catch, and he's one of the one of our players to watch. The two tight ends. Wistrom is a weapon. Blakely's got to be. And this is Roberson, the true freshman. Nowhere to run there. He's going to lose three or four. Des Moines Adams fought off a block and erased that play before it got going. The junior from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Yeah, and that's the first time that Missouri has run the ball on first down and, and, and unsuccessfully. You know, now they're off schedule. Now they're second and long. Feel like they almost have to throw the football in this particular uh, instance here. You know, Missouri... Farmer's only had nine practices, Drew. I mean, this, this guy has not been able to take a whole lot of snaps because in the last 24 months, he's had four major injuries, major injuries. And a third of those practices, three, came this week. Nebraska blitzes. Farmer with time. Has Blakely out there, and it's knocked away at the last moment by Scott Shanley. Blakely had the football. Shanley raked the arms. Yeah, Nebraska came with a blitz, and it was picked up very well by Zach Abram, but it was defended very well by Nebraska down the football field. Watch Zach Abram right over here in blitz pickup come and blow up the blitzer. 
Zach Gabriel, perfect technique. Helmet right under the chin, stand him up. That is excellent. Now down the football field. That's just good instinct. Read the eyes. Shanley read the eyes. When Blakely turned to make a play on the football, he broke it up. On third and 14, Missouri needs the Nebraska 45. They move the launch point, and the pass is behind Tate Jackson, who broke open. Farmer threw it a count early. So Missouri moves it a little bit, but they'll still have to pump the football. It was encouraging, but once you get off schedule against Nebraska on first down, you have problems. I want to correct myself. That, they ran the ball on first down twice. Zach Abram picked up nice yards on a first down carry. The second first down carry, there was a loss of about four or five. When you're off schedule in that second and long, second and nine or more, that's exactly what Nebraska wants to have happen. Harvey will punt it to Dewan Gross. Gross averaging better than 10 yards a return. And this is a line drive punt. Here's Gross on the move. Uh-oh. And he's going to get above the 45 to the 46-yard line. A punt of 40, but a net of just 14 because Gross brought it back 26 yards before Duke Rivard could bring him down. No score in Columbia. Just getting rolling. Most of this season, through four football games, Nebraska has been staked to very good field position, and they have it again on their opening drive here in Columbia. They're at their own 46. Well, their average drive start, Drew, has been almost 13 yards better than the opposition. 12.7 yards per drive. That's huge. That means they play good defense and have good special teams. They give to the fullback, and Davies gets a couple before Sean Doyle knocks him off his feet. Here's the singular offensive starters for Nebraska. Eric Crouch is tremendous. Everyone knows that who follows college football. He's a senior from Omaha. And as Dave mentioned, now he's clicking at 62% when he throws it. Big offensive line, very talented on the left side with Volk and Finotti. And of the skill guys, Darren Dietrich is tremendous. Wilson Thomas is six foot six and is having a great year at wideout. Here's Dietrich. Trying to get to the edge. He's cut down from behind. It's Keith Wright, the junior from Sacramento. Keith Wright, former linebacker. Started out as a linebacker with Arizona. He's explosive. And this defensive line, David, has been playing very well. Wright, along with Cedric Harden. Harden's a 300-pounder who's a bull. Sean Doyle, the emotional leader of the defense, along with Robinson. Those two guys make a lot of plays. Torres Ferguson's the best athlete on the defense and will need to play well today. He's a junior college transfer from Coffeyville, J.C. They play the 4-2-5. There's a rover and a whip. Extra defensive backs for speed for Missouri. Third and eight. Nebraska throws it to Thunder Collins. And Collins is cut down. Very close. Very close to a first down. Well, Frank Solich may be making an early decision. If this is fourth and short, and they're already in Missouri territory, does he go for it, or does he play it conservatively and, and try to pin Missouri back inside the 20-yard line? I have a feeling that he would go for it because he wants to get off to an early start. He wants to take the crowd out of the game. He got a very favorable spot. He may have this first down and not have to contemplate what to do on fourth down. I think if it, my decision would be four down territory if he is a little bit short because if he's short it's not by much but it's a first down moot point. Let's take a look at what Nebraska wants to get done today. You already talked about getting off to that fast start. They've outscored the opposition 65 14 in the first quarter. They want to force Missouri into second and longs like they did to end the drive second and nine or more in double digit drives by that I mean drives of 10 plays or longer wants to just knock Missouri off the football play keep away eat the clock up and get back to Nebraska style football pounding people inside with that power game three wideouts in no tight ends here on first down and they'll run option and Crouch has room Wow. He's across the 30-yard line of the 29, and I know why you said, wow. Somebody's got to pick up some equipment they lost. And what a violent cut that Eric Crouch makes. This guy changes directions like a running back. He is a running back with a, with a throwing arm hanging off that right shoulder. I mean, he absolutely froze the defender in good defensive position, and, and that's Kevin Johnson. And Kevin Johnson breaks both his ankles, you know, trying to change direction with Eric Crouch. That was a big-time move by a heck of a football player. And Kevin Johnson 
Anderson has uh, friends when it comes to broken ankles trying to tackle Crouch. Here's Dietrich, short side option, and a pretty good force coming up by Antoine Duncan. Oh, and that's exactly what Missouri wants to do defensively. Get the ball out of Crouch's hands, make him pitch it backwards to Dietrich, and then rally to the football. But I don't know if you want a handful of him all game long either, averaging five and a half yards a pop and already rushing for five touchdowns. You know, you have to have that eye back to complement Crouch. They've got it in Dietrich. And the guy who plays behind him, not bad either, in Thunder Collins. Here's Dietrich. And they get the corner. Oh, ball. Dietrich coughs it up, but it goes out of bounds. That's Duncan again nice hit. with the solid contact, but it's going to be a first down, and he's going to get the. Well, they're going to the bring ball it comes back. back yeah. yeah, the ball comes back to where, where the he lost it. Took place, right? But it is a first down. First down anyway, but Duncan helmet across the bow and, and pops the ball right out of there, and that's what Missouri wants to get done. They want to force turnovers. Now they didn't they didn't capture the football, but it's encouraging that Duncan knocks the ball loose. That's a pretty good hit. That's a textbook tackle. The ball, you don't gain those yards by fumbling it forward out of bounds. It comes back to the spot of the fumble. Crouch checking off. Dietrich, not much, runs into Sean Doyle. A 230-pound junior from Overland Park, Kansas, as we take a look at the Missouri scouting report today. Well, they want to make sure Missouri doesn't beat Missouri. The first thing they want to get done is no self-destruction. They don't want to give the football away. They had three giveaways against Bowling Green in the fourth in the fourth quarter. And then uh, win the kicking game. They want to block a punt or get a big return and then throw successfully on first down. They want to, they want to complete 60% of the passes on first down. has to throw it out of bounds. Good coverage and also a good decision, Dave. You like to point this out. Don't force the football if nothing's there. And Duncan had great coverage. No doubt. You know, make it make it third and nine and live another down. Don't turn it over or don't take a quarterback sack and make it third and impossible. Crouch is very much more accurate with the football. You know, when he was a high school quarterback, Drew, he executed the run and shoot. So this kid threw the heck out of the football. Now he's healthy. He's got range of motion in his shoulder, and he can throw the ball accurately. Big down here, third and nine. Blitz coming. They pick it up. Man open. Oh. Gibson drops the football. Wow. John Gibson had it, and he might have had enough for a first down, but he dropped it. Yeah, Crouch couldn't throw the ball any more accurately than he did right there. And Gibson knows it. Gibson's very disappointed and disconsolate. He's come to the sideline. He's in the slot. The inside receiver runs a little pivot to the sideline, right on the money. Let the ball get on him too, too quickly before he extended to reach out to get it. It was on his face mask before he could get his hands up. Crouch showed some RPMs there, nice velocity on that throw. Sandro DeAngelis from 32 yards. It's blocked. Wow, there's the big play. Block a kick. We also have a flag down thrown late by our referee. That's a big momentum builder for Missouri, though. That's the fourth kick or punt they've That's blocked this year. Running into the kicker, though, after the, the kick was blocked, ran into the kicker, running into the kicker. So let's see if this is uh, the major or the minor. And now, now Missouri's signaling they're going to decline the penalty. He picked the flag up. Blocked, blocked into the kicker. Blocked into the kicker. Yeah, once the kick's blocked, right. you, that, that's a man that can make a play defensively. It's, you're allowed to block him, It's no? like a deflected pass. There's no pass interference. Once the ball's deflected, you can run into a guy. Once the kick is blocked, he's he's live game. And, and the kick is blocked, and he barely runs into the kicker. That was, a, that was a marginal call anyway. But since the ball was deflected and blocked, the kicker is now a defensive player. He has to make a tackle, so contact, he's not null and void of contact anymore. That's the third block, or fourth block kick of the season. They had two extra points uh, blocked er earlier in the season. Now they've got a punt and a field goal. Here's a fade to Gage, and great coverage by Gross. Boy, it's a block party from Missouri early in this football uh, season. They're blocking kicks with regularity. You know, they did that under Larry Smith with great regularity as well. They sure did. And right away, Missouri coming out on first down once again, throwing the football, trying to throw the fade to Gage, take advantage of that six foot five inch frame. Now they're second and ten, second and long. Gage flanks to the top, Tay Jackson to the near side. Abram 
Trying to find running room, and he squirts through to the 25, so it'll make it a little more manageable third down. You know, Dave Christensen, again, the offensive coordinator, a little bit contrarian with his thinking. Throw on first down, run on second and long. You know, opposite of what Nebraska is trying to think defensively. So he's trying to get them on the heels a little bit and unsure of what to do in terms of their defensive packages. Spreading the field once again. Three receivers up to the top of the screen. Trips up here. Nebraska drops seven. Farmer complete first down. It's Blakely. Well, they said they were going to get him involved. He's already got three catches, Dave, and they've thrown it to him four times. Yeah, he only had one catch in the first two games. And, and now he's got three in the first quarter of action against against Nebraska because they play a lot of man coverage, and they feel that an outside linebacker one-on-one -on, -one on Blakely is, is the advantage Blakely. And he's, he's in the slot, runs a little bit of a hook route, and... and the ball's trying to be ripped out of there violently by Shanley once again, the Sam linebacker, but to no avail. Farmer gets it away. Nice catch by Tay Jackson. He's knocked out of bounds by Keo Craver. You know, Drew, they got, they've gotten Farmer out of pocket, changing the launch point to his right and now to his left. So equal opportunity with respect to rolling the quarterback. And watch, Farmer has, has got his receiver targeted right away. Here he comes out of the break. Farmer rolling to his left, squares up his shoulder pads, and delivers a strike. Tough for a right-handed quarterback to roll left and throw it that accurately. Abram. Nice little run there by Zach Abram. So he lowers those shoulder pads. He knocks you backwards. This is a little bit of a bull right here now. He is a player. Yeah, he ran over Justin Smith, who's 6'4 and 260. That's not supposed to happen. And, and the good sign here for the Missouri Tigers is they're feeding off the momentum the special teams gave them with the block field goal. Instead of three and out, they're driving the football. Worst case scenario, Nebraska is not going to have great field position. Best case scenario is Missouri scores. Here's a play action roll. Farmers come to run. And he can run for a while. Out of bounds at the 40. Didn't he have a torn ligament a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, he, he stretched that, uh, that, that ligament in his knee. He's got a brace on that left knee to stabilize it a little bit. But all the action, all the action going one way. Look at all the linemen pulling one way, and Farmer comes the opposite way all by himself. You see that brace, that big brace, that black brace on the left knee protecting that left knee? He doesn't have necessarily have the foot speed he once had. And there's Farmer warming up earlier today, making sure that he's getting that arm. I'll tell you what, he looks like a surfer from the West Coast. There's the knee brace, stabilizing that left knee when he transfers his weight. Yeah, he's from right down the, the road in Jeff City, though. Does look like Southern California. Here's a fade. Blakely jump ball. Wow. Did he hold on? No, he no. dropped it. He dropped it. Shanley, pretty good coverage downfield. Linebacker running with a tight end as we check in again with Jim Knox. Shanley's a former walk-on, Drew. Farmer will be wearing the knee brace today. That's at today's game. The very first time he'll be wearing the knee brace. Doesn't look like it's limiting his mobility right now. So far, so good. No, he has looked pretty good. Second down and 10 at the plus 40 for Missouri. Here's a counter. This is Zane Gilmore. And Gilmore, their leading rusher the last two years, gets about seven yards. He's been relegated to third team. I'll tell you, that's, uh, that's an improvement in, in depth at that running back position. You know, they have a freshman that's, uh, that's a very, very fine football player in Tyrone Roberson. And he's averaging over almost six yards per carry himself. So they can keep fresh legs in there at the running back position, and it gives them a change of pace. You know, Abram gives him the thump, the power. Roberson gives him the quicks, the kick, make you miss. They have a nice mix of running back. And Gilmore's a combination of both of those guys. Third and four. Nebraska comes with a blitz. They pick it up, and Blakely will have a lot of room. Wow. For the 17, pretty athletic move for a 250-pounder. First down, Missouri. Blakely looking a little bit like Edwin Moses. 
I trying to do a little bit of hurling action at the conclusion of that play. And Farmer is in a groove, like he always is against Nebraska, seemingly. In the shotgun, gets great protection. And, and picks the Missouri picks up the blitz. Blakely releases late. He stayed in and blocked, released late. Now to get the extra yards, he goes up and over. Tremendous effort. And here's Abrin with his head up, finds a little crease. Give him about three yards on first down. I'll tell you what, you got to give Dave Christensen credit. He is mixing it he, up. He's mixing yeah. it up, and the black shirts are a little off balance. Yeah, he's, he's doing a lot of different things with formations, with motion, and he's getting the matchups that he wants. They feel that Blakely on a linebacker, one-on-one, -on -one, Blakely is going to win that matchup. And they're utilizing Blakely, and now they've softened Nebraska up a little bit by spreading him out, and they're thumping him with the running game. Farmer has already thrown it 11 times and completed six. Play action's got a man, Chirambolo. And he'll be knocked out about a yard or two shy of a first down at the 10. He's got four catches this year. Two have gone for touchdowns. Boy, nice little misdirection once again from Missouri. Chirambolo comes across the backfield. The linemen go one way, Shurambolo goes the other, and Farmer drops back. Here comes Shurambolo, the linemen work in the opposite direction. Shurambolo comes across in, in a little bit of a counteraction, and then a rollout by Farmer that way. A nice design right there offensively. Nebraska running around trying to figure out the flow of the play. Abrin is nine yards deep in the eye. Farmer's got pressure. And Good that's, play. A, that's a legal pass. Yep. Out it, of pocket. It, it looked pretty, but he was out of pocket. Yep. No and, penalty. It's a, and it's a smart play by Farmer because he keeps the field position down there at the 10-yard line. Now, you can throw the football any way you want as long as it's a forward pass. You know, you can do a shovel pass out of pocket, outside the tight end box. No no harm here throwing it to his girlfriend in the, in the stance if he wants to. I mean, it's, it, there's no, no penalty to be incurred. So instead of losing yards in the red zone, which you don't want to do, you don't want to take a sack and lose yards, throws it away, back to the original line of scrimmage. Nice play. And now Hamrick will attempt a field goal of 28 yards. Good snap, good hold. And right through yep. from the Missouri with an impressive drive, and they have taken the lead three to nothing. 4.51 left in the first quarter. And now a word from Sitco. We know you. Brad Hamrick has been a very fine kicker in his career at Missouri. He has one from 28 yards, and Missouri leads Nebraska three to nothing. And they have kept Nebraska off balance, at least through the first portion of this first quarter. 4.51 to go. Well, Hemrick now 12 of 13 in his career from inside 40 yards. Automatic in there. Josh Davis, the deep man. He's going to get a chance from the five. And he'll get it above the 30 to the 31-yard line, a 28-yard return officially. And a reminder, next week on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week, we'll see number 11 Kansas State against 3-1 Colorado with quarterback Craig Oaks. The Buffaloes currently lead the Big 12 in total offense. That'll be a great one from Manhattan, Kansas, next Saturday, 12.30 in the East, 9.30 on the West Coast, 7.30 if you're in Hawaii. Well, now Josh Davis giving a good field position once again, averaging almost 30 yards per return, ranked nationally. Hey, Dietrich almost lost that football, and then he runs through Antoine Duncan momentarily, and then right. a late flag. What's that all about? Is that a face mask? Geez, I don't know. Or is it a late hit on the sideline? They call Robinson Might be a for a late hit? Personal, personal foul. That would be on, the, on, on Missouri. Dead ball, personal foul, 15-yard penalty. Must have been Robinson. Automatic first down. Robinson came in there, you know, I guess, when Dietrich was already out of bounds and provided the late hit. Now, I know in college, and I, and I agree with this, you don't want to name numbers, but I, I would like, I think you should explain exactly what the call is, even at the collegiate level. Yeah, you still don't have to identify. No. The player may be saying a late hit defender with a late hit out of bounds or whatever, so or taunt, you know, better or perspective. It might, might have been taunting. Right. Who knows? But plus 15 after that carry, and Nebraska has it at the Tiger 45. Dietrich and Davies in the eye. Here comes Dietrich. 
And Wright takes him down. We were watching uh, Nebraska warm up a couple of weeks ago when we were in Lincoln. And, and you've seen a lot of football players in your day. And you were looking at, at Darren Dietrich. And you said, look at the oh. legs on that guy. I'm what now he's got those big broad wide thick upper body thighs you know I mean his upper legs are just he'll break some tackles he, and he's the kind of guy just like they did against Notre Dame give him the ball more than 30 times in the game and he can hang in there Crouch option pass looks on the back side uh -oh, pick it and that will be picked off intercepted by RJ Jones and he's still going to the 20 yard line the intended target was Wilson Thomas, but he overthrew him by a bunch. Yeah, Crouch just threw it up there and said, hey, Thomas, you're 6'6", make a miracle play. But he overthrew him dramatically. And there's the takeaway. There's the turnover Missouri was looking for. They have the block kick, and now the turnover. And R.J. Jones has been a guy that's been hurt throughout camp, getting his first action of the year, and he makes a big play. 3 nothing, Missouri. Goal. There's Gary Pinkle. You want to talk about an intense guy, a guy that knows exactly how he wants to run his program? That's Gary Pinkle. Ten years at Toledo. They average more than seven wins a year. And they were a top 25 team back in 95. They went unbeaten. The last half dozen years, he won 50 games That's at the University of Toledo. Those 73 wins, fourth most in back history. He's a Don James disciple. Spent 12 years at the University of Washington. And Tate oh. Jackson had his mitts on it and could not make the catch. He had beaten Irwin Sweeney on the play. And, and Missouri is responding to his game plan completely in the early stages here. Make a big play in the kicking game. They block the field goal. Don't self-destruct. They got the takeaway. They haven't given the football up. So they're plus one. And, and that blocked field goal is almost like another takeaway. Look at that. They doubled up pretty much Nebraska in total offense. But all three drives for Missouri have begun at their own 20. Blitz coming. Farmer stands in. And this is dropped by get you the backup receiver. And I'll get you the name in a moment. Mitchell. Mitchell. Shardanye Mitchell. You know what? He changed numbers on us. That's why I'm scrambling around. He's wearing 86, not 85. And... and on that particular play, Nebraska, Blitzer came clean. Farmer had a hot read and, and almost put the ball on target to Mitchell. Now they face the third and long. This is what Nebraska feeds off a little bit, getting their nickel package in there. Six coming for Nebraska. Farmer has to unload. He was looking for Mitchell again, and this time it'll be three and out for Missouri. Yeah, good job by Nebraska defensively. Came with the blitz right up the gut on that particular occasion. Overloaded Missouri's right side of the offensive line. They could pick up five, but the sixth one came clean and, and hurried Farmer's decision-making process, throwing the ball inaccurately. Juan Gross is back deep. The last punt was a line drive by Brock Harvey. Huskers coming after oh, it. They almost geez. got there. And it was partially blocked, so no roughing downfield. And here's Gross. Oh, he lost the football. Missouri's on it at the 30. Wow. I'll tell you what, I think ripping it out of there was Kevin Johnson. I think Kevin Johnson ripped it out. Tremendous play. Now there's a tug of war, and it's Missouri's ball. Yeah, and a lot of things happening on that play. It was partially blocked, but the punt still went 38 yards. The return was 16 yards before the fumble. And, and that's not the first fumble that uh, Gross has had returning, returning punts. Watch, watch Kevin Johnson, 15 in the black jersey here, reach in and just rip the ball right out of there. Tremendous strip of the football. I mean, that's coached. That's something that, over time, repetition of that technique pays off. Second takeaway for the Missouri Tigers in this in this football game. Uncharacteristic for Nebraska to put it on the ground like that. And also the interception by Crouch. Torres Ferguson made the recovery. 
Abram tries to cut it back. John Clanton was waiting for him. The thing is, though, everything going so well for Missouri. They're plus two in the turnover department. They've blocked a field goal. They only have a 3 nothing lead. The black shirts from Nebraska keep you in football games. When you have a solid defensive football team, they, they let you hang around until the other phases get themselves squared away and straightened out. Missouri has to take better advantage of these opportunities. Actually, Casey Nelson involved in that tackle, second and 11. Farmer, short drop. And he makes a play. Tay Jackson again. Keo Kramer had the good coverage. Farmer on the backside finds Tay Jackson. Boy, it was excellent protection afforded Farmer by the offensive line. Nebraska twisted up front. They stunted and twisted, and Missouri sorted it out and gave Farmer plenty of time to throw the football. Look at the twisting going on here. Everybody sorts it out, mans up, stay with their blocks, sustain. Farmer buys more time and throws a strike. Third and short, Farmer on uh, the quarterback sneak. Will be close. He's got it. And they won't measure first down. You get a feel for Kirk Farmer's athletic ability, not necessarily running down the field today, but just moving around the pocket. Yeah, he's got the uh, escape ability, got plenty of mobility, and I like his size and his arm strength. You know, he, he keeps plays alive. And the players respond to him, obviously. I mean, they're playing at a higher level. Good protection again. And oh. broken up by Gross because open on the play was the freshman Thompson Aboga. I really like Aboga, true freshman. And the fun starts with him after the catch of the football, but Gross wasn't going to let that happen. You're not going to let a boat catch the ball and then make people miss. Gross breaks on the football, gets the left hand up, and just knocks it to the turf. Excellent defensive coverage right there. Ball hung just a little bit on Farmer. It looked like a zone in the secondary. You don't see that much from Nebraska, do you, Dave? No, I think they're going to play a little more zone, though, to be able to rally to the football when Farmer tucks it and runs. Slant. Oh. Aboga, did he hang on? Oh. No, he lost it. They get lit up pretty good right there. It's a nice pop by Ricketts, wasn't it? Good looking play by Pat Ricketts, the sophomore from Omaha. Second team academic all Big 12 a year ago. Third and 10, late stages of the first quarter. And Justin Gage is yet to catch the football. They're paying a lot of attention to him. He's getting doubled a little, little bit. That's why they've gone to Blakely, but this is a he's the backside of the formation here. Two to the left. Six coming for Nebraska. And there is Gage, and he's going to be short of a first down by about two yards. Theo Craver just mirroring him right across the field on the crossing pattern and, and making the play. And Gary Pinkle will send in the punt team, and that's a wise decision. You're hanging in there right now toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nebraska. Yeah, you don't want to give him a short field. Absolutely. You, you, can't, uh, you can't roll the dice on this one. You've got the lead. You don't want to do anything to change the momentum. Make Nebraska drive a long field. Harvey, and Harvey gets it away. Quick kick. Gross from the 11. And Gross somehow escapes again. Out to the 27-yard line. Missouri had an opportunity to pin Nebraska back inside their 15. But instead, it's a 15-yard return after a 40-yard punt. Our Big 12 championship game, December 1st in Irving, Texas at Texas Stadium. And you can order your tickets online at www.big12sports.com. Or there's the phone number, 214-638-2695. Nebraska shut out so far. Two tight ends. Here's Dietrich. And that is vintage Nebraska power football, something Frank Solich told us yesterday that he wanted to get done today. You know, Finotti pulled the big left guard, number 77 for Nebraska, pulls, and, and basically what Dietrich did was backdoor that. 
keep Finotti trapped to the right side of the offensive line. Watch Finotti pull, and Dietrich backdoors it. Once Finotti, Finotti pulls, Dietrich's on the move. Dietrich again. And he does well to get to the line of scrimmage. Keith Wright involved again. And also coming up and making a force is Michael Harden. Missouri is doing a nice job in the box, you know, defending the run. Nebraska hasn't really gashed them, you know, for the big play, the big run of over 20 yards. Missouri's getting people around the football. They're separating from the blocks well. Should be the final snap of the first quarter. On the option, Crouch fakes and not buying it. Staying home beautifully on the play for Missouri was Marcus Caldwell. That'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll be the final snap of quarter number one. Tiger fans like what they see so far. Three to nothing, they're leading. In Columbia, Missouri, the Tigers leading Nebraska three to nothing, trying to end a 22-year drought against the Huskers. Back with Dave Lapham, I'm Drew Goodman, and the Tigers have been very impressive offensively and defensively also. And in the kicking game, they've taken the football away twice. One was on special teams on a punt return. They've blocked the field goal, and then the interception by Eric Krause. So all phases are clicking for Missouri and Nebraska struggling. And Eric Crouch finds his fullback Judd Davies out of the backfield. So many weapons for Nebraska. It's not just option right and option left. Talking to Matt Eberflus yesterday, the defensive coordinator for Missouri, he said, boy, Eric Crouch is very accurate throwing the ball, and he has a very strong arm. Yeah, he throws the ball into tight spots, tight places down the football field. Crouch to Dietrich, and Dietrich gets about five or six and then takes a good lick from Sean Doyle. You, you know what, Eric Crouch ended up clipping a defensive player, but it was okay because he was tackled into him. Watch on the edge here, watch Crouch get hit from behind by Robinson, and then he takes down a defender. He takes down the corner that's got the pitch man. No foul, he took down Ferguson, I should say, the rover. No foul because Crouch was knocked down into him. Crouch, though, reached out, looked like he tackled Ferguson a little bit to me. The Missouri sideline exploded, and no call on the play, and they get some positive yards on the edge after Crouch pits the ball and then fell into, into Ferguson's legs. Now he, he gets up slowly. He get clipped. He get clipped by Crouch and, and no call on the play because Crouch gets hit by Robinson. Here comes Crouch down the line of script. Watch Robinson pursue. Now he'll hit him. And wa here's Ferguson. Watch Crouch take Ferguson down from behind. Reaches out and grabs and, and, and clips him in the back of the legs. No, no penalty because he's tackled into him. Do, do you know what? He was tackled into him. Yeah. I think if he, that Eric right Crouch arm, comes that right clean, arm was trying. He, he reached out. Oh, that right arm was trying. He didn't make the tackle with that right arm. He missed, but he tried. Davies hammered straight up by Cedric Harden, the 300-pound junior from Humble, Texas. When his motor runs, he's outstanding. And that's what he can do, disrupt. I mean, when he's got good get off, and, and when properly motivated, when so moved, he reestablishes the line of scrimmage backwards. And he is the anchor of this defensive line because of his size. He's an honorable mention all Big 12 player last year. Third and four for the Huskers. Crouch, first down and more to the 33-yard line before Clarence Jones, along with Jamonte Robinson, could bring him down. There's the great speed of Eric Crouch. And a great block by Judd Davies. And when Crouch has the football, the inside power game's not really doing much for Nebraska, but on the option, watch his fullback. Watch Judd Davies right here. Watch Davies in front of Crouch. Cut block, boom. Taking it and makes a nice block, and as a result of him freezing that defender, Kevin Johnson, Crouch cuts it right up inside of him. Dietrich spilled by Johnson, but he got about five yards. 
Nebraska no points today in the opening quarter and that is most unusual considering they average almost 17 points a game in the opening quarter. Yeah, they've, they've hung 65 on the board coming into today. In four games, they've put 65 points on the board. Nothing today. And turnover is the reason why. They blow out a field goal, too, being blocked. I mean, that was a, a gimme field goal. It's blocked by Missouri. Then they have a fumble on a punt return, and Crouch throws an interception. That's hard to score when you're giving it up that many times. See that score? Oklahoma at Owen Field leading 21-14 on K-State. Dietrich won't go anywhere on this play. Good job flying to the football, football Antoine Bynum and then Sean Doyle. Bynum wears number four, but he's a defensive end. They have a lot of converted linebackers playing defensive end to get more speed on the field. We've seen that trend the last few years in college football. They also have a converted running back. Dan Davis is a defensive end for Missouri now on the opposite side. But what, what Missouri's going to do is not present themselves as a stationary target. They're smaller up front. They're going to blitz, stunt, move around. And they blitz here on third down. Crouch has a blocker. First down to the 10-yard line. They erase the corner. Judd Davies. He's unbelievable. Great block by Davies. And Crouch, you know, we said it before. Some guys have quickness. Some guys have speed. Crouch has both. He's got quickness, the jackhammer feet, plus he runs a 4-4-5-40. Fastest quarterback they've ever had at Nebraska. One of the 10 fastest athletes that Turner Gill can remember since he's been here. There's Davies blocking the edge and Crouch with those jackhammer feet. Tight rope on the sideline for positive yards. Quick and fast, deadly. Dietrich big opening, thinking end zone. He'll get to the two. Duncan prevents the touchdown. The thing that took place is Big Finotti, the left guard, pulled and eclipsed. I mean, he just absolutely covered up the right side of the offensive line. Watch Finotti pull and then just engulf. And, and Dietrich, after that block is made, boom. There's, I mean, it's just like, that's, that's, that's a stack of pancakes right there and throw some syrup on it. Dietrich almost took it to the house. Dietrich again. And he's cut down at the line of scrimmage. Sean Doyle shot the gap. He might not be the biggest guy in the world, but number 32 in black is active. Well, they say his defensive teammates say that he's got the mentality of Justin Smith, the All-American defensive end that's uh, fourth pick of the draft now with the Cincinnati Bengals. Doesn't have that athletic ability, but he has that mentality. He is a warrior, and he comes hard every snap. Third down from the two-yard line, third and goal. Option Dietrich gets a block on Robinson and he won't get there. Good reaction getting the football. How about Cedric Harden, a defensive tackle, making a play on the boundary? And Robinson, even though he got blocked through, he made it difficult enough that made Dietrich reroute himself and allowing the inside out pursuit to take place. I mean, Judd Davis has a good block on him. Crouch gets blown up, but see, Robinson stays alive enough to make him hurdle. Once Dietrich hurdles, the inside-out pursuit by Harden is there. Great defensive effort. Frank Solich has a decision to make. A yard and a half to go for six. They Pick call it. timeout. Pick it. And an interesting decision. Frank Solich, after a timeout, will go for it on fourth and goal. And he needs almost a full two yards. I think he's going to run the option to the right. Give Crouch to put the ball in his best player's hands and let him make a decision whether to keep it or pitch. He runs it to the boundary. Dietrich blockers, touchdown. Boy, great execution. Awesome execution. Davies and Wistrom, good blocks. Also, Volk was out there. Touchdown, Nebraska. Gutsy call by Frank Solich in Nebraska. On the road, deciding to go for the lead instead of making sure you get points and tie the football game up. But his offensive execution pays big dividends for that uh, roll of the dice there a little bit. Not really a big roll of the dice. He's got tremendous off uh, confidence in his offensive line and Crouch with the football in his hands, making the right decision. Sandro DeAngelis adds the extra point. And it's 7-3 Nebraska as they score on fourth down. We'll be back after a word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Union on the campus of the University of Missouri in Columbia.
And with Jim Knox and Dave Lapham, I'm Drew Goodman. Nebraska has taken a 7-3 lead with 10.39 to go in the second quarter. Darren Dietrich got into the end zone, his sixth rushing touchdown of the year. Josh Brown will kick it deep. And Tate Jackson will get an opportunity. Oh, that's a pretty good collision. Yeah. And you know who made the hit? The kicker, Josh Brown. <laughs> pretty, pretty good, pretty good action right there. Here's the uh, option to the short side of the field. Once again, Davies hunting somebody down the block and, and, and gets one five yards deep into the end zone. That's how well it was executed up front. Let's get rid of the football in a very timely fashion to Dietrich. 14 play drive. That's what the Cornhuskers wanted. They wanted a drive of 10 or more plays. Took almost five and a half minutes off the clock. That's Husker football in Frank Solich's opinion. That's what he wants more of today. Keep away. Nebraska rotates so many defensive linemen. They have Patrick Cabongo in there right now. And he's listed as a third teamer, but he plays a lot. Darius Outlaw is in at quarterback, and he hands to Zane Gilmore. So by design, we knew we'd see Darius Outlaw. Junior from Powder Springs, Georgia, a suburb of Atlanta. Farmer had a good hot hand going. They didn't want to disrupt that. But since Nebraska has taken a lead, the momentum of the game shifting a little bit, deciding to go with Outlaw to see if he can create a little bit of a spark. And, you know, he's, he's more than worthy of this. Uh, it, it, Outlaw has not played poorly. Farmer's just a good player. Nice to have depth at that position. Absolutely. Here's Gage on a screen. And Gage, dangerous after the catch, gets a first down to the 41-yard line, his second catch of the day. Justin Gage used to be a quarterback. In fact, he has 16 pass completions and a couple of touchdowns in his career as a quarterback. Watch left guard here on this on this screen pass, Reggie. He comes out of there and does a heck of a job. He releases underneath, watch the cut block. A, a little defensive back, boom, takes him right down to the turf. That's an excellent job by a 290-pound lineman. Very agile. Outlaw to naked. And wow, that's a great move by <laughs> Outlaw for no gain. Wonderful move on J.P. Wishman, who kind of hung in there and held on until some friends came along in white jerseys. That was the naked again. Uh, and, and what Missouri did, student body right. All the linemen pull, everybody goes to the right, and then he goes back against it. Watch, all the linemen pull, Outlaw takes it back the other way. It looks like it's a student body right. Everybody pulling away. Oh, no, I got the ball. I'm coming back the other way. Nebraska, good defensive discipline there. Nothing. Outlaw to Gage. Nice throw. Good cat. No, he dropped it. He dropped the football. Good contact provided when the ball, the ball arrived and contact was simultaneous to the arrival. Pretty good hit. Craver. There's the lick by Craver, separating Gage from football. So it'll be third and ten. Missouri is four of eight on third downs in the game. And I bet the four conversions were third and medium and short. Third and nine or more is where Nebraska really makes hay with their pressure packages in the nickel. Trips to the near side. Nebraska drops seven. Outlaw gets it away, and he was looking for Blakely. Good coverage by Shanley. Boy, what Shanley has done a very nice job in coverage today. The Sam linebacker, former walk-on. I mean, there's a tribute to the walk-on program right there. He's matched up with with a very very effective defensive end today. 6'4", 250 pound Blakely, and uh, and Blakely and Shanley are just going toe to toe all day long. Blakely, of course, one of our players to watch during the course of this football game. Three early catches. Good punt by Harvey, turns it over, and Gross from the eight-yard line. Wow, seam. He saw a seam, and he stepped on the accelerator <laughs> out to the 30-yard line. 52 yards on the punt, 22 on the return. Kevin Johnson made the tackle on special teams. 
And with 9.01 to go in the second quarter, let's get an update from the field with Jim Knox. Knoxie. Okay, actually, Drew, I just talked to Kirk. He said he is fine. The reason why he's on the sideline, this is by design. That's why Outlaw's out on the field. He'll wait his turn. He should come up shortly. Well, Darius Outlaw took that series, but as Dave mentioned, Kirk Farmer looked good. Yeah, he, was, he was had a hot hand there going. Here's Crouch, and Jamonte Robinson grabbed him. We were talking during the commercial break. Eric Crouch, you know, some guys run 4-4. Four four. There, right. There's guys out there. There's plenty of guys who run 4-4. Four four. Right. But this guy hits 4-4 four four faster than most guys. He goes 0-60 to 60 quickly. And, and he's what the, my best adjective for him is sudden. All, I mean, he's, everything with him is whoo, sudden. And, and he, he runs, I bet he's got one of the fastest 10-yard dash uh, times on the team. He got six on first down. Here's Thunder Collins on a little cutback. Just a couple there. Again, Sean Doyle involved in the tackle along with the free safety Clarence Jones. It'll set up third and a couple. Well, with a little over eight minutes to go in the second quarter, Nebraska would like to duplicate the last drive. Double digits, 10 plays or more, eat a lot of clock up and score, taking a two-score lead, an 11-point lead before halftime. That's their M.O. Missouri, of course, has other plans in mind defensively. Crabs, good fake, and you know, he'll get enough for the first down. You know, it looked like Nebraska had him outnumbered at the corner, and Crabs still got three or four. Yeah, Missouri is doing a good job, Drew, of, of, uh, of getting numbers in their favor and taking some chances. Pretty good blocking. Here, look, look at the... Now, that's tough. What do I do? I have to take the pitch man, but I know Crouch is keeping it. I mean, Ferguson's in it. He's between that old rock and the hard place. Robinson finally comes over the top, but too late. Crouch is freezing. Collins. He gets rerouted by Harden, and then Jamonte Robinson again. Jamonte Robinson may have 10 tackles already in this game. 55. Second on the team coming in and stops. Yeah, he, he's got he's got tremendous foot speed. And, and, you know, college football and in the NFL these days, speed is everything. <laughs> Collins with a blocker in front. And he's cut down at the 50-yard line. A patient run by Thunder Collins. And it'll set up third and short again. You know, Drew, we talked about Eric Crouch and, and that quickness and speed. When he gets on the edge, look at the moves. I mean, he'll absolutely freeze you with, with, his, with his wiggle. And then when he, when he turns it up the football field, he'll get those pads down and, and deliver a little bit of a thumb. I mean, this guy is a great athlete. Once he gets the edge, he's going to burn you for some significant yards. A great, great football player that makes tremendous decisions. Cratch, Collins, nowhere to go. He's going to lose a bunch. Wow. So this time on third and two, the Tigers make the play. A loss of five. It was like they were in the huddle. There were four Missouri Tigers in the area. When Thunder Collins got the pitch, he looked up and saw black jerseys everywhere. It's like, where's everybody else? All I see is Missouri. They made a tremendous defensive read there and, and rallied a lot of people to the football. First time we'll see Kyle Larson today. Nebraska, they just turn people over and another guy steps in. You forget about special teams. Larson's a first-year punter. He's averaging 44 and a half. Yeah, that's number 20 in the country. Now, Missouri, generally speaking, goes after the block. They don't get close this time, and Larson hits a very good punt. And James was interfered with. That's a halo violation yeah. at the 15. A punt of 40 yards. Well, and at least right now, it's a net of 40. But I think he's going to get five more. My question is, did he, did, did, was the blocker, looked like he took the blocker. Now, the, did the blocker take him in, or did he take the blocker? The, he's hit by his own man. But both, I mean, the halo, the halo is invaded. But if I'm engaged by a blocker, I don't know. I don't like that halo stuff. I mean, if I'm being pushed around and I'm trying to fight off a block, the heck with the halo. I'm just trying to make a play. <laughs> I'm no angel. No, no you're not. No, you're absolutely. not an angel. <laughs> Close, though. Yeah. We're back in a minute. 
Missouri 7 to 3 under Frank Solich Nebraska's 26 and 1 against non-ranked opponents and in terms of total offense this thing is a push yeah and it's a push in time of possession both teams have had the ball for a little over 10 minutes it's uh, it's even Steven turnovers have been a factor in this football game Kirk Farmer's back at quarterback and a little slant route to Gage not handled Second and ten. Hey, next week on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week, we'll see the 11th ranked team in the land, Kansas State, and the team on the cusp of the top 25, the University of Colorado. There's Josh Scobie at Kansas State. Gary Barnett has a lot of talent. Craig Oaks, one of the best sophomore quarterbacks in the country, if not the best. Next week, 12.30 in the east, 9.30 out west. They'll run with Roberson, and Roberson, who took off his red shirt a week ago and had 74 yards in the win against Southwest Texas, has his second carry of the game. You know, what, what Missouri's trying to do is, is block down and then pull. This is the same action that they've been on the naked. Now watch the quarterback, Farmer. He gives the ball to the back, but he executes the same look as if he had the football in the naked. So he's trying to make Nebraska to get a little complimentary play there. It, does he have the ball, or is he giving it off to his back? Put him in a sweat. Third and six, Nebraska blitzes. Farmer to Mbogo, and face a face mask yeah. is going to give him a first down because he was short by a yard or two. Des Moines Adams yep. was on the face mask. He threw him right to the turf by the grill. Can't face do that. Mask. Five yards. First down. Kyle Dowden with the explanation. Umpire turned around. Once the ball is thrown, the umpire now gets his eyes down the field. There's the yank of the face mask. You can see the, he the head being yet turned. And that's dangerous. You get neck injuries and things of that nature. That's why you don't want people up by the headgear. Both of these teams preach discipline. Gary Pinkle for years, one of the least penalized teams in the MAC. And a couple of yards for Roberson before Mark Vedro, you make the a, weak side linebacker, makes a play. You make a great point, Drew. Last seven years. Gary Pinkle's football team has been the least penalized team in the country. And for the last two years that he was at Toledo, they led the nation in turnover ratio. They only had seven giveaways all season in the year 2000. His team had three giveaways in the, in the fourth quarter alone against Bowling Green. None today, though. No, nope, none today so far. They're plus two. There's Gage, and he breaks the tackle. Justin Gage to the 39-yard line. Yeah, he broke free of Dwan Gross and got yards after catch. Missed tackle cost Nebraska about another 20 yards. 28 yards on the pickup to the 37-yard line. Look again. Booker made the, the final stop, but the missed tackle is by Gross. Gross slides right down Gage to the turf. Now an extra 20 yards later down the football field. Finalization by Booker. Probably the best athlete for Missouri, Justin Gage. Farmer on the backside for Blakely. And it's broken up again. And Scott Shanley, Playing a game. I'll tell you what, he has done a marvelous job in coverage. Now, instinctually, a linebacker wants to play near the line of scrimmage and make tackles in the run game. But this guy's been dropping off in coverage all game. And he's locked up on him. And watch him rake. Violently rake at the football. Timed his jump right with Blakely. I mean, he's mirroring his every move. Now, boom, rip at it. Rake in there. Get those arms down. And, and this, this launches the football. Nice play. That's great technique. Second and ten. Farmer, quick throw. And you can see Blakely has good hands because that was one of those fingertip jobs for four yards. You know, Blakely and, and Justin Gage are so tall and long, you know, and, and, and he's got anything in the area, he's going to make, make a catch on. He's 6'4 with tremendous wingspan. And, and Gage is 6'4 with tremendous wingspan. So anything in the vicinity, they, they get their hooks on it, they've got it. Third and six. This could be four down territory. Farmer will run. Design draw. Booker's got him. 
And they're going to knock him down after maybe a yard or two. Quarterback draw was, was stuffed by Nebraska. Now, decision time. Are you looking at Missouri? A, yeah, you're looking, David, a 50-yard field goal. Now, if you punt, you better get it inside the 20, because if you don't, you only pick up 12 or 13 yards. It comes out to the 20, the ball already on the 33-yard line. Missouri's going to talk it over. Gary Pinkle trying to decide. Do I have, does my kicker have enough leg? Yeah. He's hit a 51-yarder against Bowling Green. He hit a 56-yarder in, in the spring game, Hamrick. But against Nebraska in, in a game condition, a different situation. If you want to knock off the number four team in the land when you're a three-touchdown underdog, I think you go in this situation. Of course, it's not my card. Last year in Lincoln, Eric Crouch accounted for 283 yards, a total offense, a couple of touchdowns, including this pass to John Bowling for six. But the big play was Bobby Newcomb, who's in the NFL now. He went 94 yards on a punt return to break Missouri's back. That broke Johnny Rogers' 28-year-old record. Meanwhile, Kirk Farmer passed for 214 and ran for 83 before breaking his collarbone on this play in the third quarter. It was a one-touchdown game at that point, but Nebraska went on to win 42-24. But all year, Dave, Nebraska never gave up more yards than they did against Missouri. They gave up 492. And 332 of those were accounted for by Farmer in three quarters of action. And that was, you saw it at the end of a long scramble. He had 83 yards on the ground at the end of a long scramble as the Tomahawk chop dislodged the football from him. He also broke his collarbone. Long field goal, Drew. 50-yarder here. See, they won 22 in a row against Missouri. A 50-yard attempt by Hamrick. He's got one from 51 this year. Elevation. He's got plenty of distance, yeah. but he's Hooked. wide left. He's hooked at a skosh. And he got the ball up. I was worried about the elevation a little bit. You want to make sure you hit a 7-iron and not a 3-iron. He got the 7-iron. So with 2.29 to go, Nebraska will take over. Jim Knox is downstairs roaming around. Jim, what do you have? Okay, Drew, thanks. Coming up on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report, we will take a look at the Southwestern Bell Big 12 Players of the Week. Also, Dave's coaching tips. The bump and run from that wide receiver spot. We'll check the Big 12 scoreboard. Also, a report from Austin, Texas on tonight's Texas, Texas Tech game that comes your way on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. Drew? All right, Knoxy, thanks. Now, do I understand this right in your coaching tip? You play a little wide receiver today? No, no, Justin Gage does that. He, he, he defeats. He's getting off the line of scrimmage against the bump and run like he has today. I don't know too many 320 pounders going yeah. wide out. No, Here's, doesn't happen. <laughs> Here's Crouch on a QB draw, and he'll get eight yards. Cedric Harden tackled him from behind. You know, Harden is doing a good job of, of rallying to the football, retracing his steps. And that's what they've preached with this defensive football team. Once you disengage from your blocks, if the play's downfield, get off the block, retrace your steps, take an angle, and get involved. And, and they're really hustling. They're running around the football field pretty well as the defense the Tigers are. Nebraska has a couple of timeouts, and Dietrich will roll for the first down, and that'll stop the clock. Again, what an advantage when you run that two-minute drill in college as opposed to the NFL because you get the automatic stoppage each time you move the chains. Right, and, and what Nebraska's mantra is right now, eat up all the clock and put points on the board. Had a man, he threw it behind John Gibson. Looked like he expected Gibson to settle down into the zone, and Gibson kept drifting to the middle of the football field, and Crouch threw it behind him. I think he was expecting Gibson to hook up, and Gibson drifted on him a little bit after he made his break. 129 to go in the first half. Nebraska averaging 35 points a game with just seven here in the first 29 minutes. Dietrich 
And a nice. good open nice. field tackle by Antoine Duncan. He's been the man. He's made a few of those now. Yeah, he's given away about 50 pounds. The junior from Denison, Texas. He's given away a lot of height, too. At 5'10", I think that's generous. 5'10", but I, he put his helmet across the bow on Dietrich and forced a fumble and took him down to the turf that time. Interesting play here, third and six as the clock winds inside. One minute to play. Ball at the Nebraska 49. They're looking underneath, and it is complete to Wistrom, his first catch of the ball game. Tracy Wistrom, the All-American candidate, moves the chains, and he gets out of bounds at the 41-yard line of Missouri, the senior from Webb City, Missouri. He's got a brother, of course, his big brother Grant, playing defensive end for the St. Louis Rams. And Tracy Wistrom averaging 20 yards per reception for his career, a little over 15 per catch this season, but over 20 for his career. He's been a big play guy at the tight end position. Crouch steps up. Deep ball for Thomas. He's got it at the four-yard line. There's where that six-foot-six frame comes in handy against the 5'10 Duncan. Exactly, and Crouch said, I'm going to make you, it's a jump ball. I'm going to get it up there, and you're my athlete. You're a basketball player. You've got vertical. You've got hops. You're 6'6", six, six, but it all starts up front with decent pass blocking. And, and look, Crouch steps up in the pocket and, and delivers a high arcing football. And, and really an adjustment is made to the football by Wilson Thomas before the defensive back. Dietrich, good cut. He'll walk in. Touchdown, Nebraska. Boy, that was a big play, that, that little alley-oop pass, basically, from Wilson, uh, from Krauss to Wilson Thomas. And Thomas, he really made a better adjustment to the football than he did jumping to catch it. I mean, he got his defensive back in, in a sweat. Duncan, much smaller. Duncan couldn't find the ball. Thomas found it quicker and made a play. And Dietrich finished it off. How about that for patience in the two-minute drill? Well, like we said at the top of the show, now Nebraska can hurt you throwing the ball, too. Here's Sandro DeAngelis, 14 to 3. So Wilson Thomas, who had been very quiet, got a flag. Makes a large play when Nebraska needs it most. Guy who has waited his turn in Lincoln. Illegal formation. Only six men on the line on the kicking team. Five yard penalty. Retry. Well, got to get that tackle up on the line of scrimmage. In the, in the field goal protection team. You can't make it a, a little horseshoe effect. It has to be a straight line. So another, another opportunity for Nebraska to make this an 11-point game. 10 points right now, 13-3 edge. This extra point is big. Dietrich with seven rushing touchdowns this year. And Ooh, he missed it. Hit the upright. It hit the upright. No go. That was a big miss. That was an enormous miss. Yep, that's so, another special team's mistake. And now you have, a, as you said, David, 10-point separation right. instead of 11. And they've had a field goal blocked. They've missed an extra point. They fumbled on a punt return. Three kicking game, game mistakes for Nebraska. And watch, right away, he just pushes it right. And it hits the right upright. Boink, right off that right upright. And, and ricochets right. Doesn't ricochet left through the uprights. Ricochets outside of him. Now it's a two-score game. Touchdown field goal ties it instead of being down by a point still. Well, Missouri felt that they couldn't have a push in the kicking game, Dave. They needed to win the kicking game. They are. They are winning yep. the kicking game. Jay Jackson, Marcus James going back deep. 23 seconds left in the first half. Again, coming up on the Sonic Halftime Report with Jim Knox, our Big 12 Players of the Week from a week ago. Check the Big 12 scoreboard. Big football game in Norman between Oklahoma and Kansas State. We'll preview Texas Tech in the University of Texas tonight. James from the 18. And he's to the 32-yard line. 17 seconds for Missouri. Well, Wilson Thomas is 6'6". 
Duncan is a generous 5'10". Crouch lofts it up there and says, you got the size advantage, make the play. Thomas makes the adjustment to the football before Duncan can find it, and it sets up this play for Dietrich. Option again, the short side of the football field, and, and Dietrich takes the pitch from Crouch and scores scored in touch football. Nobody laid a fingernail on him. And it looks like Missouri will be content to be within 10 at halftime. Justin Gage goes back to about the 19-yard line, and Kirk Farmer will take a knee. And that will be that for the first 30 minutes. Missouri wants to regroup. Well, they did a lot of good things in that first half, but most importantly, if you're going to win against Nebraska, you have to put points on the board. They moved the football. But they're one of two in field goal attempts and never really got close to pounding it into the end zone. Darren Dietrich has scored twice for Nebraska. And they have that 13-3 lead. And Jim Knox is down with Frank Solich. Jim? Coach, defense did a heck of a job in the first half. Offense starting to warm up. Take away a couple costly turnovers. You please how everything went in the first half? Well, not pleased with everything. Um, certainly uh, missed field goal. Uh, that was it. We kicked the grounder, and then we missed the extra point. We fumbled on the punt return. Uh, just a lot of things that got to get a lot better, but uh, at least we're able to come back offensively, put a couple drives together, and I think the defense has been hanging in there. Okay, best of luck in the second half. Thank, Thank you. you, Coach Drew. All right, Jim, thanks very much. A coach uh, is never satisfied, particularly when Frank Solich is used to large point totals early, but Missouri playing them tough today. 13-3 to the score. Coming up, the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. Coach down 13 to three at the break coming out in the second half. What'd you tell your team at halftime? How do you get back in it? Well, I think we've been playing decent. You know, uh, I think the, the biggest thing we have to do is we have to make a few more plays. They made a play at the very end, a big play that uh, that, that catch in the, in, on the uh, five yard line. And that's, uh, you know, that's what you got to do if you want to win games like this. Best of luck in the second half, Coach. Drew. All right, Jim, thanks very much. By the numbers in the first 30 minutes, total offense really pretty close, though most of Missouri's offense came in the opening 15 minutes. Right, and, and Nebraska outrushed them by a football field, which is typical. Two turnovers by Nebraska really hurt them, and you throw in a blocked field goal and a mixed extra point, and they had kicking game problems. If there was one good thing about their turnovers for Nebraska, it came deep in Missouri territory. Right. Davis with a big opening to the 32-yard line. Josh Davis continues to roll up the yards in kick returns, averaging close to 30 coming in. That was he got about 30-plus there. He's number 11 in the country coming into today's action, and he's had a couple. I played with his dad, tough Tony Davis, and, and he runs the football just like Tony Davis, uh, his dad did here for the Cornhuskers. Not much regard for his body. He's just going to take it north and south and say, here I am, lay your best lick on me because I'm coming after you. He's put together pretty good. Dietrich trying to get downhill on the toss. And Missouri reacts well. Jamonte Robinson, along with Michael Harden, two yards on the advance. Yeah, they've done a decent job of bottling up uh, Dietrich for the most part. You know, he came into this football game averaging over five yards a pop, and in the first half, he only averaged three seven. So Missouri's defensive front seven doing a nice job of controlling Dietrich. They've got 19 carries now, 69 yards. is defended well he'll get a couple it'll be third and five for Eric Crouch in the Nebraska offense well Nebraska wanted to get the inside power game going and where did they run the football with Dietrich only two yards to carry to the left side although he had a big touchdown run to that left side nine up the middle that's where the power game is for 31 yards not a decent average there and then he's really done the most damage to the right side four carries there for 26 yards on the option so they've really done a nice job in all quadrants against them Nebraska with four wides in the game Crouch wow is that intercepted no trapped it Antoine Duncan trapped it and again Crouch and John Gibson seem to be on different pages yeah, one's reading the coverage, the corner giving one coverage and, and the receiver's reading something else. And they're they're conversing as they come off the field to that exact in that exact fashion. Decent protection. Crouch has all kinds of vision and opportunity to throw the football, but he thought his receiver was gonna hook up in front of the cornerback and receiver drifting once again in his pattern to the middle of the football field. That's happened twice today. 
Kyle Larson for just the second time today will punt the football. Missouri again rarely sets up a return. They usually try and block the punt. Low snap, here they come. And Larson gets it out of there and it's a beautiful wow. punt. And that's a halo violation again. I take it though, he's just still inside the 20-yard line. You know, you got him backed up, and he tried. He tried to choke it down two yards away, but just couldn't quite get it done. But if you have a good return guy, Drew, I still maintain that five-yard halo is no big deal. Blow him up, take the five yards, because what if he makes you miss and he gains 12 or 15? Kick, catch, interference on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty, first down. And, and you want to know what to embellish that point, Dave? You're also going to make the return man think, and maybe he sure. drops one. Absolutely. Keep blowing him up. But that, that one was dicey because uh, Nebraska, they were choking it down. They were trying to break down and allow him enough opportunity to catch the ball and then make the hit. You know, on first down today, uh, Missouri, only 1.6 yards per first down play. Not good enough. Farmer has a screen set up for Blakely, and it's broken up by Ch Chris Kelsey. Almost called him Chad, but Chad's uh, been gone for a couple of years. Let's take a look at where where the Missouri quarterbacks, Outlaw and Farmer, have attacked. They're getting the ball down the field to the receivers seven times, to the tight end, Blakely, five times, and then checking down to the running backs only once. So they have gotten the ball down the football field, but only in that 12 to 15 yard range in the deepest penetration. Farmer is going to be a hold, and Farmer is going to scramble for about eight yards. Took a good lick from Shanley, right? but it's coming back. Yeah, instead of uh, third and short, it's going to be second and a bunch because it'll be half the distance to the goal inside the 20-yard line on this on this holding penalty. Oh, we oh, wrong. defensive holding. So I'd take the, I would, well, it's five yards and repeat down. So do you take third and two or second and five? I take, uh, I take third and two against this black shirt defense. They're going to take the penalty, I think, make it second and five. Personal foul. Oh, hands it's, to the face. On the it's defense. an automatic first down. 15 yard penalty. First down. Yeah, it wasn't a hold. That was, he was signaling hands to the face. So that's a personal foul. That, there's no decision to make there. That's the big one in, in the automatic. So defensively, you can't get your hands up into the face of the offensive lineman just like the offensive lineman can't do that to you when he's pass protecting you. That's uh, another one of those instances that makes Deacon Jones upset. He didn't like it. He wanted a head slap. He wanted hands to the face. I'll tell you what, the, the late great Walter Johnson with the Cleveland Browns, he was a dancing bear at defensive tackle. I played, he had a head slap. He'd hit you in that ear hole. Boy, your, your ears will be ringing for three days. Trips to the near side from the 40-yard line. Abron twists for a couple of yards. John Clanton had him around the legs. It'll be second down and eight or nine. You know, the team that has done the self-destructing has been Nebraska. You know, they've, they've turned it over a couple times. Interception, fumble on a punt, return, and, and uh, had a field goal blocked. Missed an extra point, hit the upright, and then this big personal foul when they had, you know, Missouri backed up a little bit. So, really, Nebraska's been the one that's had Nebraska on their schedule today as well as Missouri. But the whole deal when you're trying to beat the fourth-ranked team in the country is you have to take advantage right. of those mistakes, fully, fully take yeah. advantage. Blitz coming, Farmer hangs in, and good coverage, Irwin Sweeney on Thompson Aboga. And it'll be third down and nine. And this is where, this is where Nebraska's tough with their pressure packages and that nickel in the third down. Dave, you always look at the O-linemen. The O-linemen have done a nice job for Missouri, given Farmer time. No, they really have. And, and, and this is what Farmer's looking at. He sees Umboga coming to the middle of the football field, and he has plenty of vision and plenty of opportunity to throw the football, but just can't quite get it done. Sweeney's coverage was, was more than decent. Gage is alone to the top. They need the 49 in Nebraska, and they were looking towards Gage, and it was broken up by Dewan Gross. Ball was thrown a little bit behind Gage, and Gross uh, made a play on it. So Missouri could not take advantage of the 15-yard penalty, and Gross will go back and return the punt as Gary Pinkle continues to coach his quarterback.
Oh, nice tackle. That's an outstanding tackle. That's T.J. Leon. 13 to 3, the score. Three minutes in to the third quarter. First came Bob Devaney, then Tom Osborne, now Frank Solich. 39 years, 39 straight bowl games, 39 straight winning seasons. It's unbelievable. Eric Crouch on first down gets a couple. In addition to that, check this out, Dave. Since 1969, there's been only three weeks during the fall that Nebraska has not been in the nation's top 25. Three weeks. A couple of times in 77 and once in 1981. That's it. That's why every kid that grows up in the state of Nebraska wants to play for Nebraska. Even if they have scholarships at other schools, they walk on at Nebraska to be part of that storied program. Since 1969, only three weeks out of the rankings, that's, that's absurd. It's absurd. 504 out of 507 polls. And Crouch for Gibson. This time he was well covered. R.J. Jones, who has, the inter has an interception in the game, provided the coverage and it's third and seven and one of the few times today nebraska is faced with a third and long because they're different dave third and third and four five or six most they'll teams run. pass yeah. they, they'll run definitely they've run on first down all but one time today drew they ran on first down 15 times and only threw once so they've got a tendency of running on first down for sure they still average over five yards a pop on first down today ferguson coming off the edge low snap Crouch in trouble, and he's going to do it on his own. Wow. First down. Just like you draw it up. You know, let, let bad snap, let Crouch, you know, mess around a little bit, then pick it up and run like crazy. I mean, when, when there's no play there, a guy like Crouch can still make a play, and that's what makes this guy special. He turned disaster into opportunity, and he did it all by himself. You know, he, he keeps his poise. He says, I'm gonna, they lost a little contain. I'm going to get to the edge, and I'm going to run as fast as my legs will carry me. And that's fast. That, that's faster than just about everybody in the stadium. Yep. First down, Nebraska. They're going to run a reverse. Thunder Collins off the slot. A little of this, a little of that, and he gets nine yards. You know, Thunder Collins is long-legged, so he doesn't have a quick change of direction, but he has enough of a change of direction. Boy, it's nice when uh, when you have a guy like Thunder Collins that has this kind of ability, and here he is. He'll come in, in, in motion out of the slot for the reverse. Nice depth. You know, you have Dietrich and Collins in the game. If you don't recognize it quick enough defensively, oh, that's not a slot receiver. That's not a wingback. That's Collins. Man, he's a running back. And they pick up nine yards on a nice play. A down to play with here, perhaps second and one. Checking, Crouch, Crouch, Crouch changing plays. This one he does so well, gets out of a bad one into a good one. Wistrom single Wistrom timeout. wants a timeout. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of seniors. Crouch is changing the play, and Wistrom says, I don't like that play. Timeout. Yeah, Wistrom's looking at the clock saying, we, get it. we don't have enough time, Eric. Columbia on the campus of the University of Missouri. They have one of the top journalism schools in the nation. It certainly is a good one. That and the Newhouse School of Communications at Syracuse University. Th and don't forget the Ithaca <laughs> College School of Communications, Roy Park School of Communications, south of Syracuse. Here's Dietrich, and he's close to a first down. He ran into Cedric Harden on second and one. Let's revisit the scouting report for the Huskers today. How'd they grade it out, David? Well, they wanted to get up to that quick start. Didn't happen. No points. Forced Missouri into second and long. Very nice. Only 1.6 on first down. Double-digit drives. That's not good enough, really. Only one. That's acceptable, but that's not what Nebraska wanted. They wanted one more than more than one drive of 10 plays or more. That's why they're in a little bit of a dogfight here. It hasn't gone according to Hoyle game plan-wise. It's going to be third down in inches. Now, Frank Solich was telling us yesterday that he really likes what he's seen from his team. He feels like they've improved each and every week, and every coach in America wants to see that. They've knocked off Notre Dame. They dismantled Rice in the last couple of outings. He said, but we're going to find out exactly how good we are when we get into Big 12 play. And he knows, because he's been around the Big 8 before this, the Big 12 for years, that every week you're going to play somebody that wants to knock you off and has the ability to right. knock you off. And, and how about Missouri's improvement? They lose to Bowling Green here at home in their opener. 
Then they uh, smashed the Southwest uh, Texas team, and now they're playing Nebraska off their feet. So that improvement, they've been going the right way on their graph as well. Crouch. Second effort. And second effort, effort with help from his buddy Darren Dietrich gets the first down. And then... You know, the one It'll thing take about five minutes to unpile this. <laughs> yeah, there's a massive humanity there. The one thing that Frank Solich was concerned about, Drew, with that three week layoff was that Missouri would add some new wrinkles, and they have. They have a nice game plan. They haven't shown a lot of things that they're doing today against Nebraska that, that they, the first couple weeks. I mean, they, they've, they've changed some things up. Got Nebraska back on their heels a little bit, but I still would not like to have three weeks off once my season started. I think Missouri's playing very well considering that. Good point. Thomas in motion, and here's a waggle, Crouch, and it's complete. Good throw, good catch. Gibson loses his helmet, but he's down at the 35-yard line. You know, that's what the Missouri defensive coaches were talking about with Crouch. He throws the ball in tight spots. A lot of quarterbacks would say, Gibson's not open. But he's saying, in my mind, he's open. I'm going to thread the needle. Because that is pretty darn nice coverage uh, by Anthony. And, and Crouch just put it right on the money. I mean, he's got confidence that he has enough velocity and enough accuracy in that right arm. And velocity on that particular throw, in addition to accuracy, the big key. He had some zip. Davies trying to shake free, and he does for a moment for about three yards. And now let's take a look at the Missouri scouting report through two and a half quarters. Well, don't self-destruct. Excellent. Excellent right there. Haven't done that. Win the kicking game. Excellent. Excellent right there as well. They've certainly won that. Throw successfully on first down. Haven't gotten that done. That's that's. They wanted to be a lot better than two of eight. They wanted to complete closer to 60%. But they've done so well on their first couple of keys. They're in a nice football game. I mean, you know, in the second half, they're, they're in this game for sure. Galladay goes in motion, Crouch on the option, and a flag comes in. They're going to call a little takedown from behind on John Garrison. In the center, Yeah, he's going to be called for a hold. You know, by Nebraska standards, John Garrison's a smurf, Dave. <laughs> That's true, and he's only 6'4", 285. Holding, Holding on the offense, 10-yard oh, penalty. penalty. Still second down. But they list Finotti at, at 340 on a six foot four inch frame. If Finotti's 340, I'm about three, mm, about three. <laughs> Finotti is a big, big man. I'll tell you that. There he is, big old number 70, right in the middle. He's the he's the tallest in the in the huddle, and the widest, and the thickest, and he the biggest. He doesn't get on a conventional scale, does he? No, he's got to get on the grain scale. Crouch could call another timeout. This is interesting. Burning them up. They burned two here on this drive. 7.56 to go on the third quarter. It was 13-3 at halftime. It remains 13-3. Go by 10 with 7.56 to go in the third quarter. Reminder, next week on our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week, we'll see the 11th-ranked Kansas State Wildcats with Josh Gobi against 3-1 Colorado. We could break into the top 25 next week. The Buffs led by that man, Craig Oaks, and also Marcus Houston could be making his return next week for Colorado. Here's the option, Dietrich trying to get some room, and he won't. Good defense by Missouri, and there's that athlete, Taurus Ferguson, that we learned a lot about in the last couple of days, the junior from St. Charles, Missouri. Another guy that runs 4-4. He covers a lot of ground. Never played defense in his life. Former running back. Starting to get it figured out, though. And he, he's starting to get comfortable that side of the football. He was a two-time state champ in Missouri in the 110-meter high hurdle, so you know he can run. You know the guy at Kansas State, one quick second again? Rock Cartwright. I'll take him at fullback of my team any day of the week. Gotcha. At Kansas State. Crouch stands in. Wistrom. Great play. First down, Nebraska. Wow. Wistrom showing hip flexibility, turning and reaching behind him to make a play on the football. And Crouch, that's another one. Throwing into tight spot. Wistrom grabbing that right hand a little bit, got smashed. 
But I'll tell you, he showed some flexibility there to make this play. Wistrom is in the slot, and now he's appearing in the picture. Ball behind him a little bit, showing the flexibility to make a catch on a ball thrown behind him. And Crouch throws, really threads the needle amongst three Missouri defenders on third and long for a big play. They're going to measure. They move the football back behind the 35 or the 25 yard line. Well, that's close. That's a credit card. Slide a credit card in there. Oh, they just got it by a credit card. They got it. Think about Nebraska in the past. I mean, most teams don't convert third and 15s, obviously. Right. But but for Nebraska, that was most difficult because they were purely an option football team. Right. And, and now they have a complete quarterback. Crouch has thrown the football very well. And now Wistrom is closing in on Junior Miller, number two on the all-time tight end reception list. Junior Miller was pretty fair tight end. Here's Thunder Collins. And he winds for about four yards, spinning out of the grasp of Sean Doyle. Oh, a little, little, uh, little extracurricular flag in, in, in Missouri's high five, and so it must be going against Nebraska. A dead ball foul. Dead ball. Personal foul against the offense. Be a 15-yard penalty. Still second down. Frank Solich doesn't like this at all. Self-destruction continues. You know, it, it, you're advancing toward the red zone. You have a second and about six, and you lose your composure. I don't know if they called it on the big fellow Finotti or not, but uh, I'm sure if he lost his temper, that's not that's not a guy you want to get mad. But boy, he's got to keep his cool if he did, because now it's second in in 21 instead of second in about six. No, I wouldn't want to get him wild up. No, let, let the sleeping giant take a nap. Crouch has a man, and Wilson Thomas, good hands, 22-yard line. But, but that's a great, great throw and a great call. Get half of it back. You don't have to get it all back on one play. And he got half of it back. Now he's out, now he's in business again. You always talk about NFL quarterbacks having to throw the deep out. Yeah. And, and this kid now, remember, in high school, he executed the run and shoot. Now his shoulder is, is pain-free, and he's got range of motion. He can throw the football down the field. That was a tight spiral with some nice velocity and very accurate, and he's shown that all season long, completing over 62% of his passes. Now you have a chance on third down, third and seven. They need the 15. Trips to the top. Wistrom. Wistrom right here in the slot. There he is, though an option with Thunder Collins. Gibson a good block initially, but Missouri reacts to the football led by the middle linebacker, Sean Doyle. Now, do you let DeAngelis kick a field goal, and here he comes. You want to get something out of this. Fourth down and, and, and basically still about seven. Well, they're going to bring Josh Brown because DeAngelis has missed an extra point and had one right, blocked. Right. And Josh Brown, you, you mentioned the tackle he made on the uh, kickoff. This kid's played wingback in the spring on a, in a couple of seasons. He's a football player. He's more than a kicker. I don't mind. I want to do, don't want to degrade kickers, but this guy plays at the line of scrimmage. 37 yards away. Got it in there. And it is good. Nebraska extends their lead 16 to 3. And for Josh Brown, that's his first field goal of the season. He was 0 for 1, and that one was blocked as he continues his season-long battle with DeAngelis for the number one kicking spot. When Nebraska's had two field goals blocked this season, take a look at the top 25 here, Drew. Three, four, and five once again. And there's our next week's, uh, next week's one of our teams we're going to be seeing. And Colorado again uh, would have been 26th if you went beyond the top 25 in terms of votes this year. So again, they're right on the edge of being a top 25 team. Texas A&M perhaps. They have Notre Dame later. We asked Frank Solich on his thoughts through one month this year. Whether we're on schedule or not, uh, we'll, we'll probably know in about three or four weeks as we get into the middle of the, the Big 12. But at, uh, but at this point, I think the four games that we had that were non-conference games, I think, has really helped us develop as a football team. Well, we they've got a lot, a, lot of, uh, a lot of snaps under their belt. They really do. Yeah. They were dominant against Notre Dame. Beat the Irish 27 to 10. Played their best game against their toughest opponent to date. Hey Jackson won't get to the 20. He's erased at the 19-yard line. Here's the scoring graphic 
for Nebraska. They drove the football 54 yards in 14 plays to pick up three points. Well, there's another double-digit drive, though, and they took six, almost six and a half minutes off the clock. That's the kind of football that Frank Solich wanted. Now, does he want to finalize it with a field goal? No. He wants to crease the end zone. But that's the second double-digit drive of the day for the Cornhuskers, and uh, I think that's starting to make Frank Solich a little bit happier, but there's still work to be done. Nebraska's not where it needs to be, in his opinion, yet by any stretch. And if Missouri's going to stay in touch, Dave, they got to get points, I think, out of this drive. Abram, a big opening. Zach Abram still going. Run oh, over, oh. people. Wow. 48 yard line. How about that run? Does that hurt you, Drew? Zach Abram said, I hear Drew Goodman saying, we need to get something done on this drive because we're down 13. So Zach said, I'm going to answer. I heard the call. And I am going to answer it. And boy, Zach really got after it. And a little bit of distortion. Nebraska up the football field. And, and, and the, basically, defensive end thought that Farmer was going to keep the football and run the option. And there was no back left to option with. He thought it was a naked bootleg. 28 yards on that pickup. 15 yards longer than Abrams' previous long run. Tate Jackson. On a little hookup across the 50 to the 47, and that keeps you on schedule on second down. Now it's second and five. Too often today for Missouri, it's been second and nine or second and ten. You know, the Missouri has, has got Nebraska a little bit confused, Drew, about, you know, with the naked bootlegs, complimentary plays. We'll get, get into it a little bit after the snap. Abram. Runs through Des Moines Adams' arms and gets a couple, so it's third down and three. Now watch the defensive end here. Watch what he does. He thinks that this may be a naked bootleg. So he gets up the field. Kelsey, look, he's following, you know what I'm saying? He's following Farmer, and he gives a gaping hole to Abram. So it's basically, because they've run so many naked bootlegs off of that same action, got Kelsey indecisive. And, and he created a huge cavity because of that. And if there's one play that's hurt Nebraska this year, it has been the naked. Third and three, blitz coming, Farmer. Oh, man, you know what? He threw it off his back foot, and he had Shardanye Mitchell wide open. Now, David, it's fourth and three. You're down by 13. What do you do? Well, it looks like they're going to punt the ball. It looks like they're going to play field position. But, you know, Farmer's, farmer's uh, mechanics there rolling to his left just never get his shoulder pad squared up to the line of scrimmage and threw across his body a little bit. Gary Pinkle deciding, you know, we're, we're still going to play field position and make Nebraska go long field. Missed opportunity because Mitchell was all alone. Would have had the first down easily. And Missouri, can they get there? Great effort. They'll down it inside the five. Torres Ferguson down, covering it up, a 42-yard punt. Nice job by Harvey. Great job. And this is exactly what Coach Pinkle wanted. Back him up. Here's what Nebraska has in the coming weeks. Iowa State on the road in Waco, Texas Tech, and then the big meeting with third-ranked Oklahoma, the defending national champs, on October 27th. And then you have number 11, Kansas State. Every year it's a battle with Colorado. That'll come the day after Thanksgiving. Boy, three out of four games right there. Oklahoma, Kansas State, Colorado. Three out of four games are amongst the nation's elite. On the goal line, Crouch. Boy, he was close to being tackled near the end zone. And he squirts for maybe a yard. Sean Doyle around the football all afternoon. You know, when you talk about Colorado, they're only lost to Davis to Fresno State. No embarrassment. That's a top 10 team. And people at that time thought, how could they lose to Fresno State? The Fresno State's the real deal. And football obviously full, filled with woulda, shoulda, coulda as you look at Crouch's numbers today. But Colorado threw a pick. Right. Should have won the game. An opportunity to win the football game right. on the two-yard line. Yep. Late. Little confusion, yeah, confusion for Nebraska. Oh, man, Jamonte Robinson blew a kiss right on the forehead of Darren Dietrich. I mean, if you're a linebacker, this is what you dream about. 
And I don't want to be kissed like I like the gentler kiss. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't like that violent kiss. Robinson just that was a that was just a coconut, a cocoa butt shot there. Coconut to coconut. And there's Robinson filling the hole and boom. I mean, you talk about standing the guy up. And he did. You just saw the shock, the impact, just boom, immediately upright. That was a stunner. That's two ball of balls meeting. In close quarters. Third and eight, Nebraska's backed up. Oh, man, Crouch escapes. And on wow. the first down. Wow. Oh, man, look at this. Jeez. Oh, no, he could go. Wow. Amazing. See you later. That may be one of the most unreal runs I have ever seen. I thought he was trapped for a safety, and he turned a safety into a touchdown. Unbelievable individual effort by an incredible athlete. 95 yards, the longest run in Nebraska history, we believe, wow. for a touchdown on a scramble. And uh, you're right, it would look like a safety. It could have been a safety, and he showed the elusiveness, and then he showed the suddenness and the explosion. Strike the Heisman pose right now, Eric. Give me a little Heisman, because that was a Heisman-type play right there. Turn adversity for your football team, poten potential adversity, into a big play. Unbelievable, and they're going for two after the missed extra point in the first half. Crouch have any oxygen left in his tank? Boy, you talk about conditioned athlete, huh? Look at this. Oh, little gas though, threw it low. He threw it low to Wistra. <laughs> That's unbelievable though. I just watched it and I still don't believe it. I mean, for him to even get in the huddle, I would have sucked down two tanks of oxygen. This guy is amazing. He's barely, he's barely breathing as he comes to the sideline. Watch the elusiveness. I, right here, I think, oh, there's, there's trouble. He might be in the end zone for a safety. Now he just starts making people miss the change of direction, the quickness. Now once he sees the open field, he turns on the Jets, the 4-4-5 speed. Nobody closes on him. He's pulling away. Boy, there's some hustle, though. <laughs> little celebration action. He's got, he's got his teammate, Wilson Thomas, involved. Unbelievable change of direction right there by Crouch, and he cuts back, changes the changes the uh, the football into the left hand to protect it. Aware enough to do that, and now it's golden goal post. Bye bye. You remember Johnny Rogers' great run against Oklahoma on the punt yeah. return in '71? Looked just like it. I'll tell you what, that is going to live oh. in history like Johnny Rogers' run by Eric Crouch right there. Longest five yards, longest ever. Unbelievable. I mean, I, I am in total shock at the individual effort that that kid just showed us. I mean, he is a gamer, man. Gamer. I, I actually thought after he got the first down, he, he probably was going to run out of gas. But he had another 80 yards in his tank. Incredible. That goes out of bounds. Well, you remember the Johnny Rogers run. Let's flash back. November 25th, 1971. Yeah, Johnny Rogers, who later in the year would capture the Heisman Trophy, breaks about three tackles initially, and then cuts all over the football field and goes the distance. Boy, and you know what? Nebraska beat Oklahoma that day 35 to 31. And of course, Johnny Rogers inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in South Bend earlier this summer. That is one of the all-time runs. Oh. And I'm not so sure Crouch's wasn't better. Crouch made as many people miss. He really did. They had two 94-yard runs in the past. Roger Craig had one of them, wow. in fact. In 1981, went 94 yards for a touchdown, but Crouch just did those guys one better. He sure did. And, and if I'm an NFL executive, general manager, I take Eric Crouch in like the third or fourth round, and, and I make him my punt returner, my kickoff returner, and I'll continue. Got a, got a flag here. I don't know if the play clock expired. Prior to the snap, false start. A little flinch. Five-yard penalty. A little flinch Still up front. Down. But with Crouch, I'd let him return punts. I'd let him return kickoffs. And, and I, I would let him be a slot receiver. I'd let him be a third down back. And he could be my emergency quarterback. That's a valuable commodity. He is a player. He's, and there's a lot of places he can play. Oh, he, this kid is. And he could he could also be my gunner and cover punts. He, he, I'd love, I'd love to have him on my roster. They'll throw it in the flat, and Tyrone Roberson 
We'll get about four or five yards, and it'll be second. Check it, third and ten. Now right here, I, I'm thinking potential safety. Crowds show strength and elusiveness. Now, whoop, make you miss. And that, that's, that's a good athlete. That's a defensive back. Whoop, make you miss. Another defensive back. Now he's in the open field, and, and here come the Jets and, and start to pull away. Look at Thomas, though. Thomas is, he's, he, that guy eats up some ground. Now, he's got a stride on him. But he, he, had, he had people, you know, like, like Anthony in hard missing tackles. Toward Gage. And it's going to be interference either on Gage or on Craver, the cover man. I think it's going to be on Craver, Drew. When Gage went up to tip the ball to himself, Craver leaned into him and, and pressed. And he, and he pressed Gage off. So I think they're going to call uh, Craver for, it, it, watch him lean back and press into him. But he's got his head turned trying to make a play on the ball. But Gage tips it to himself. And I think that's what the flag's going to be, is interference on Craver. But, boy, he had his, he had his head turned. So they gave the first down, the, the, the uh, interference in the first down for now Missouri. The, now, in the background, you hear some boos, and you're saying, why are they booing? We're, we're in Columbia, Missouri. Well, the reason is, <laughs> is there's probably 25% of this crowd wearing red. Right, and Frank Solich is saying, I don't agree with that. I, I'm not sure it's that's the language, but he said, Craver's got his head turned making a play on the ball. I don't, and, and you know what? He's got a point. I, don't, I didn't like it either. Farmer, Blakely, sixth catch of the ball game for the tight end. That's what, six for him? Six, yep. six catches for Blakely? And, you know, we wanted, to, we wanted to check him out and see how he progressed during the course of the game. And a half a dozen, half a dozen catches is, uh, is, is significant. He was one of our players to watch. We've been watching him. And, and Nebraska's been watching him, too. And there's, there's the matchup that's gone on all day long. Blakely working against Shanley. But it's coming back. Holding, huh? Oh, illegal. Gets the offense. 15-yard penalty. Still first down. Do I detect a makeup call off the interference? <laughs> oh, chop block. Illegal chop block. One it, lineman sets him up, and the other one accordions him down, I guess. You never performed that technique, did that, you? That used to be legal. And, and they have outlawed it, and they should, because we did accordion block a few guys that uh, it wasn't really fair. I mean, you know, we're... You, you can really do damage to a guy's knees that way. And 25. But the head slaps used to be legal, too, and I get a lot of headaches. It's affected you since. Yes. Gage trying to get back to the football. Farmer again throwing across his body. And it's going to be second down and 25. One of the big differences, I think, between the 2001 Nebraska Cornhuskers and the 2000 Nebraska Cornhuskers is their defense. Last year, they gave up 19 points a game. You say, hey, that's pretty good. Well, it's the most points they've given up since the 50s. Right. And this Nebraska team defensively, I think, is more in line with what we're accustomed to seeing. They can flat shut you down. Yeah, I agree with you, Drew. They have tremendous team speed in every position group. thought he's going to get a blitz moved Abron and throws weak to Blakely and Blakely will have a few yards but you know what it's now going to be third down at 19 and you, and you know Drew it's been a it's been a community effort on the defensive side of the football a lot of guys involved coming into today's game 24 different players had contributed to 56 tackles for loss 12 different players had contributed to 16 quarterback sacks so everybody's getting a shot. Everybody's getting a piece of the action on this Nebraska defensive football team. It's truly a team effort. There's no dominant superstar. It's a team effort. Third and a couple of acres. Farmer. Oh. Got hit, and it got tipped as well, and it falls incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Boy, Farmer got blown up off the edge. In, in, in providing the uh, the actual the actual pop was Wickman and, and watch him up here watch him separate now he now he's now he's closing and he, and he takes Farmer off his feet sideways in the middle of his throwing motion that'll that'll cause some inaccuracy. Harvey, this may be his best punt of the day. Gross inside the ten. Ooh, she got hit by his own man. Golly. I'll tell you he what, got, he got 
he got backwards. yeah he got depleted by his own man oh man his head's spinning right now because he didn't anticipate that it's like I got the same color jersey on as you he's hurting it, it's enough to try to avoid the 11 guys in black shirts Boy. 53 yards on the punt, 15 on the return. Watch Gross. This will shorten your neck. He got hit low by the by the by the defender that was being blocked by his teammate, and then his teammate lit him up up top. So he got high load, and the guy up high was his teammate trying to execute a block. And and man, it was uh, it was significant. The hit Demerith, I think, is the is the one that uh, that hit him up high. And right now, that's Excedrin headache number 32 for Demerith. That Gross is feeling. Well, they continue to work on Dewan Gross, 22 to 3, with 24 seconds left in the third quarter. Arsitko, we know you. I was an All-American at Missouri in 1978. I'm best remembered for an NFL playoff game in 1981 when I caught 13 passes and also happened to block a field goal with four seconds remaining to send the game into overtime. And I might yeah. add that his team won that game. Yes, they did. They played the Miami Dolphins and... Uh... And, and won that football game and then a week later Drew a, a week later a week later they came to Cincinnati in the coldest game in NFL history 59 below in famous uh, at that time Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati and one of the guards for that great Bengal team yeah I never broke a sweat in that game we beat the Chargers 27 7 and this player scored that touchdown against us in that game but we did advance to the Super Bowl by 20 points Pratt gives to Thunder Collins, who lurches ahead for about five. Now, in that football game, San Diego yes. went from playing in over, what, 100 degrees? They, to, it was to about 145 degree swing. Is that what that it was? Game. Yeah. yeah. It was, like, it was like in the high 80s, almost 90 degrees in humidity, and 59 below when they came calling to us in Cincinnati. That's, that's an extreme change. And if you don't have the answer by now, we're not giving you any more hints. <laughs> Three quarters done. The story of the day, as it typically is with Nebraska. Number seven, Eric Crouch. Wow. Sensational. And underline that a few times. 22 to three. The Huskers leading in Columbia, Missouri. Fourth rank, Nebraska, through three chapters, leading 22 to 3. Back upstairs with Dave Lapham, I'm Drew Goodman. You know, as announcers, we see great plays and we throw around superlatives. I don't know, honestly, if I've ever seen a better play on the football field than we just saw from Eric Crouch. I think that's going to be Eric Crouch's signature play. I mean, this, I, you know, great players step up and make phenomenal plays. And Eric Crouch is a great player, and he turned a bad play into an unbelievable play for his football team. And Thunder Collins makes a nice play, breaking a tackle. And he'll have a first down out to about the 38-yard line. And let's pay a visit to Jim Knox. All right, Drew, Dewan. Dewan right now is doing a nice job recuperating from that tough hit, but he has a heck of a gash on his arm. Dewan Gross right now trying to clean that up, and he'll be back in the game. That was a lick. That was. That was a shot and a half. Collins getting some work. He runs hard. He sure, he sure does. And, and obviously, he'd be a starting tailback on <laughs> almost every other team in the country, but he's playing behind a kid that's a heck of a football you know, player Gary as well. P Gary Pinkle made an interesting observation to us yesterday. He said, you know what, there's a difference when you play a top five team. Right. And, and naturally, you're playing a great team. He said, sure. but there's a difference between one of the top five teams and a team that's 10 or 12th in the country. And, and he's talking about the athletes on that football team. 43. And the caliber athlete, no holes on those respective teams. And Eric Crox is as good an athlete as there is in the country. Crouch gets a couple of yards. It'll be third down and two or three. We know you. We gave you a lot of hints to come up with our Sitco. We know you. A All fellow American employee. Missouri. That's right. There's Kellen Winslow. Yes. Works with with uh, with us, and uh, Kellen Winslow is, is just as good a tight end as you're ever going to see. He may be, may be the best ever. Certainly we just talked about a receiving tight end. And of course, the Bengals, your Bengals, went on to knock yes. off the Chargers that day and went on to the Super Bowl in 81. But he was a mismatch waiting to happen with that size-speed ratio. Third and three, Crouch, late pitch goes out of bounds, and 
Nebraska will not convert on third down. Well, I think Gary Pinkle has got another thing to be positive about here with his respect to his football team. He had mentioned that they hadn't responded to adversity like he had hoped. Crouch provided a lot of adversity there, and they responded on this defensive sequence. You know, they, uh, Crouch individually turned a 10-point game you know, in, into, into a lot more than that with, with his spectacular play. 13-point game at that time. Into it, into it more than that, but they responded. They have Kyle Larson will punt. Marcus James back. Oh my goodness! Look at this punt back at his own ten. He says, "I got no shot." Right. He was right. <laughs> Larson's got a strong leg, and it was helped by the wind. 57 yards on that punt. 22 to 3 the score 13 06 to go in the fourth quarter Kirk Farmer has taken every snap save one series for Darius Outlaw today and Farmer's performed pretty well and for him to get to a football game healthy is uh, also a good sign for uh, Missouri here's a screen to Gage that was a little missed time high and away and I don't know how far it would have gone anyhow because reacting very quickly was T.J. Hollowell. Yeah, Farmer missed Gage, Gage there, but Farmer, you're right. In a 24-month time frame, two years, four major injuries, broken collarbone, broken hand uh, at the start of the fall, missed all the fall campaign, sprained his knee. Uh, just, just unbelievably bad luck. Something in common with Farmer is Roberson gets nothing on second down. Really? What would that be? <laughs> well, you're both big strapping, good looking guys. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. And I was gonna say we're both males. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we well, have... there's three things then. <laughs> and, this, and the second thing that I was thinking of is you're both scratch golfers. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. I just scratch the cover off the golf ball every time I play. <laughs> Oh, yeah, how about Farmer though? He can he can play that thing too. Third and ten, Nebraska blitzes. Farmer is gonna get dropped. Back at the five-yard line, it's Hollowell, who's a linebacker and he runs like a corner. Yeah, he ran a 10-400 in high school. That's that's some severe speed. First sack of the game for Nebraska, though. Yeah, they've done a good job of getting the quarterback out of pocket, and, and, and here comes the pressure, and he, he's untouched and, and absolutely gets it done. You know, when you're unblocked, you got to finish. And when you run like Hollowell does, you're definitely going to finish. And Farmer, he just he couldn't even pull the trigger. How tough Dewan grows, Dave. He's back there to return the punt. He's not going to get a chance. Love for punishment, isn't he? This goes out of bounds at the 39 yard line. So Nebraska will have a short field and it's starting to slip away from Missouri. Any chance they had to stay in touch. 11:39 left in Columbia. Which is the administration building here at the University of Missouri. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox, Collins fakes a reverse. And falls ahead for about five yards. And there's a flag coming into the fray late. Yeah, Dave, you, you were talking about, you know, you have Thunder Collins after Darren Dietrich. They have such great depth. Holding against field. Nebraska. Hold against Nebraska. How about their defensive line? Jason Lohr is out for the year with a right. knee injury. They still play 11 defensive linemen. Most teams are scrambling to find four guys. They have 11 they can play. And, and Drew, that's why 12 different guys holding, have combined. Holding. On the offense, 10 yard penalty, still first down. For now, what is 17 quarterback sacks? 12 different contributors. And, and, and you've got 24 different guys con contributing on 57 tackles for loss. I mean, it is a, it's, a, it's a group effort. And it's a talented group. First and 15. And the throw and catch. Wilson Thomas on the receiving end. Let's take a look at some scores around the Big 12 today. Look at this. 
Oklahoma 35-27 in the fourth quarter now at Owen wow. Field. Barn burner. And Iowa State putting the hammer down on Baylor. No one talks about Iowa State. They won nine games last year. Top 25 team won their bowl game. They won their bowl game. And, you know, they lost some people. Sage Rosenfels at quarterback as you look at the night schedule. Oklahoma State's at home. Texas and Tech will be a very nice matchup. Nice battle. You bet. But, uh, you know, Iowa State, they now have kind of a winning attitude. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, Dan, uh, Coach McCartney and his staff have turned that program around. Dietrich with a lot of room. He'll have a first down. He was hit by Kevin Johnson, and he still got another five yards after contact. And, you know, the, what, what uh, Iowa State did with their athletic department, it was patience. Because, you know, Coach Mack was working it. Work, you know, people were a little impatient. Geez, when's it going to happen? It's been three years, been four years. And then it happened. You give a guy like him enough time with a plan, you know, and he's, and he's, he's building the foundation, then the first floor and the second floor, and now he's got himself a house up there. He does. Dan McCartney's done a marvelous job. First down, Nebraska. Here's a little more Darren Dietrich. This is where Nebraska typically... Wears you down. Wears you down, yep. gets more points because all of a sudden you you don't you're tired of hitting Darren Dietrich. He's yep. no fun to hit. Well, here's here's the deal: a seven play differential. But look at the look at the clock. You know, Missouri's thrown the ball a lot. That's why you know they're they're off the field quickly. Nebraska is running, so that clock runs and runs and runs, and they start just eating it up playing keep away. turn not much doing there it'll be third down in a couple he's knocked down by Cedric Harden who's played very well you know if you're flicking around the channels today and you're just joining us or maybe you're rejoining us a few minutes ago we saw honestly one of the greatest plays we have ever seen on the football field and you're gonna see it a lot but we're gonna show it to you again in a couple of minutes, in and that was a run by Eric Crouch. That's his signature play, Drew. That's that's the play he's going to be remembered by. It may be the signature play of the 2001 college football season. No doubt. You know, we saw Johnny Rogers' punt return, uh, you know, a replay of that back in 71 when he won the Heisman. That was his signature play. I think we saw Eric Crouch's signature play on this field in Missouri for his career. I mean, when people talk about Eric Crouch, that's the play that's going to be flashed up to show what Eric Crouch was about. And after the Rice game, where he's 9 of 11 throwing it, and ran for more than 80 yards, he's got 314 in total load today. Yep. On first down, here he comes Crouch, again. thinking end zone, getting end zone. Touchdown, Eric Crouch and Nebraska. Nice blocking by Thunder Collins out there as well. Thunder College, Collins uh, blocked a couple of people and Crouch took it inside the pylon. He was thunder and lightning on that as he had a couple of people handled. His sixth rushing touchdown of the season and take a good look because Eric may be done for the afternoon. That's a good point as well. But he's added 16 pages to his resume. <laughs> I can just say one thing. If I'm a general manager in the National Football League, I want him on my team. You know, in, in college recruiting, sometimes they recruit a player and all they put next to him is ATH. He's an athlete. Right. We don't know where we're going to play him. You draft that guy as an ATH. He'll play. They have scored 29 unanswered behind Eric Crouch, who's unreal. He's unreal as a football player. And if you talk to his coach and the people that know him well, Chris Anderson, the sports information director, they say this guy is one of the best people they know. Tay Jackson, six, seven yards deep. Check this out. He has 191 yards rushing today. The all-time mark by a quarterback is 199 for Nebraska. Tommy Frazier in the bowl game. Here's that run again. He almost is sacked in the end zone. Yeah, I mean, Tarpoff almost has a sack. Now he starts making defensive backs miss. And these are good athletes. And he's making them look kind of silly in the open field. And, and once he finds an opening, he's got 4-4 speed himself, and he's gone to the house. That's, not only, I mean, he started, what, about seven yards in his own end zone. So 107 yards in length, plus all the serpentine he did. He ran about 150 yards, probably. Amazing. 
That's a good way to describe it. Amazing. That pass for Gage is low. And it'll be second and ten. So I don't know if they'll keep Crouch in. He's eight yards shy of Tommy Frazier's record in the right wallop, wallop that uh, Nebraska put on the University of Florida. The previous regular season mark for quarterback rushing in Nebraska was 174 by Jerry Gadowski. Now there's one that uh, doesn't roll off my tongue with Frazier and Turner Gill and But you know what? Those. But Jerry was a player, good player. Though. Yeah, he's a Jerry player. Jerry was a very good player. Yeah. Farmer, incomplete, looking for the true freshman, Thompson Umboga. They like him a lot. They think he's going to be a terrific player, 6'2", about 185 pounds out of Grand Prairie, Texas. And he's, he's blessed with that ability to make the first guy miss. You know, he turns into a heck of a running back after he catches the football. And that's what they like about him. Another record. Crouch is closing in on his eight yards shy of the total offense mark for one game. Held by Jerry Taggy. Another Jerry who could play. Yes, he could. Pressure coming. Farmer vacates. And he has to throw it out of bounds. Number 14, Jerry Taggy. And Taggy did it against Missouri back in 1971. Well, the black shirts now are in total control of this football game. Missouri almost having to be one-dimensional down 26 points. I mean, you can't really stay with any kind of a running game, so it's tee-off time for the quarterback now and the, just what the black shirts desire. Here's Gross. Found the wall. Another short field for Nebraska with 9.17 still remaining. A reminder, the Big 12 championship game will come your way December 1st from Texas Stadium in Irving. And you can order your tickets online at www.big12sports.com or you can call 214-638-2695. Certainly Nebraska, an opportunity to be in that Big 12 championship game. And that guy, Eric Crouch, sure wants to be there. Well, they got a new quarterback, so Crouch will break no more records today. Jamal Lord has come in, and he's a handful. 6'2", 215-pound sophomore from Bayonne, New Jersey. And Jamal will lose a couple of yards. They've always had a pipeline, Dave, back to the New Jersey area. Rozier. Mike Rozier, Irving Fryer. Irving Fryer. Yeah, they, they, did, they did a nice job. Uh, recruiting out of that uh, out of that region and this kid you know he's four for five on the season throwing the football so he's completed 80 percent of his passes and obviously what he's got is the is the quick feet as well yeah, and he got most of the snaps at the spring because eric crouch was nursing the shoulder injury and shoulder surgery so jamal lord was number one during the spring and this is deontay grixby the third team eye back. And he'll get about seven yards. Grixby's a sophomore from Omaha, 5'8", 205 pounds or so. You know, when, uh, when Eric Crouch made the play that he made through turning a potential safety by Tarpoff into a touchdown for his football team, that was the straw that broke the camel's back for the Missouri Tigers. They, that changed the whole game. You're right. They were still hanging in there. If they make a play there, get a short field, maybe punch it in the end zone, they're right in the football game, but that completely turned everything around. Well, if that's a safety, now Nebraska has to free kick from their own 20-yard line. And, and, you know, you've got to think Missouri is going to get nice field position, and if they, you know, even get another field goal, that's that's five points. So potentially, it, went, it was a 12-point swing. Touchdown instead of five points for Missouri. And that just, that was the difference maker in this football game. Total, total momentum killer and builder at once. Brixby. Runs into Jamonte Robinson, who's going to have to ice down his shoulders. It is enough for a first down. He's going to be a sore young man tonight. There's going to be a few guys in the whirlpool tomorrow. This was a hard-hitting football game, and Frank Solich fully anticipated that. You know, he said to us uh, yesterday at the Nebraska practice that, uh, you know, every time Nebraska-Missouri lock horns, it's a, it's a battle physically. 
Prewald, the fullback, gets a touch. And he gets about five yards. He's had a few touches this year. He's got 34 yards rushing now. There's Gary Pinkle. And Gary Pinkle will taste success as Larry Smith did before him because they're not very dissimilar in my mind. They're both hard-nosed guys that stress discipline. And they will be a physical football team for years to come. And that's what they were under Larry Smith. Right on. Not much doing there on second down for Grixby. You know, the thing that Gary Pinkle wanted, wanted to have happen is no self-destruction, win the kicking game. Those took place for his football team. It was offset by individual big play ability out of Nebraska. Right at the end of the half, Wilson Thomas makes a, a play on an Eric Crouch alley-oop throw, basically. And then Eric Crouch absolutely single-handedly changes the complexion of this football game with his individual big play effort. So big plays negated the positives. Lord will throw for the first time. And he's trying to get it to Troy Hassebrook. Incomplete. Here's what Missouri has on the menu in the upcoming weeks. In Stillwater, home against Iowa State on the road in Lawrence to take on Kansas. And then the toughie of the month of October when fifth-ranked Texas comes a-calling. There's going to be interesting matchups the next three weeks. No doubt about that. On the option, Josh Davis with room. He'll have a first down to the 16-yard line. I tell you, he, it's flashback when I look at Josh. I, you know, I mentioned before, I play with his dad, Tony. And he looks like him, he's built like him, and he runs just like him. I mean, this was just lower your shoulders and get up the football field and, and get everything you possibly can. Protect the football. That's, uh, that's typical Davis family running style right there. Like father, like son. And Nebraska's always done a great job of recruiting the brother, the son, the cousin. Right. All in the family. Freewald and Grixby comprise the backfield again. Jamal Lord trying to change the play. Now calls timeout on first and 10 from the 16-yard line with 5.26 remaining. Nebraska leading 29-3. to They're going to go to 5-0. and They were number four coming in. You know, one of the things that's happened in college football and from time to time this does happen North Carolina has set the bar they were 0-3 and they right. knock off in convincing fashion Florida State and now if you're an underdog Dave if you're Missouri playing a Nebraska or a Texas Tech playing a Texas you now have a game plan you know how you can point to that and say you know what it can be done no that's true and, and teams like Nebraska in, in top five top ten teams have to be aware of that and have to have to take care of business so that doesn't happen but one thing that Nebraska does Drew is they win games they're supposed to win and when they hold people under 10 points this will be their 98th strength victory when they hold people under 10 points and, and, and against non-ranked teams since 73 they'll now be 223 wins 13 losses against unranked teams 27 and 1 against Frank Solich they win the games they're supposed to win it started with Bob Devaney it's always been one week at a time and, and some coaches talk about that and some coaches talk about that and live it and look at this 39 years in a row and, and without a hiccup and 32 of those are nine they're 32 straight nine or more victories that's big time Lord on the option. Good pitch to Grixby. And Grixby, first down of the three. It'll be first and goal there as he runs through Clarence Jones. And, and now we start to see what Gary Pinkle was talking about. Top five teams, they don't have weaknesses and they have depth. And, and they just, Nebraska, you know, when they're at home, they'll play seven fullbacks and, and five 15 tailbacks, it seems like. It's unbelievable. They had 16 different people, Dave, last week against Rice carry the football. Little power eye here. Josh Davis. Oh, boy, he wants it. Oh, he really does. <laughs> Looking for his first career touchdown. The redshirt freshman from Loveland, Colorado. I understand uh, Tony, his dad, is going to be general manager of the new Lincoln Arena football franchise. 
So they're going to be uh, he's going to be moving back from Colorado to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Is that right? Yeah, as a family and, uh, and work that side of things. Here's Jamal Lord. And he's going to strut into the end zone. Touchdown. So Lord gets his first touchdown of the season. Last year in mop-up duty, he scored four times. They travel from near and far. One of the amazing things about the Nebraska Cornhuskers and their faithful is many of the people that can't get tickets in Lincoln at Memorial Stadium, where they could probably sell 200,000 season tickets, their opportunity to see their team in person comes on the road. Yep. They're, they're here. They're here today. Missouri fans are leaving. Nebraska staying. 36-3 Huskers. 6-3 now, Nebraska. They were held scoreless in the opening 15 minutes. But they've been pretty impressive since. You now it's 4 11 to go. Let's find our friend Jim Knox. Knoxie, where are you? All right, down by the Nebraska bench right now. Calm, cool, and collected bunch. They are happy the way things are going. Ron Brown, coach right there, just told his team, let's finish it off the way we started. That is with style. And right now, Nebraska is doing just that, Drew. You know, Drew, uh, when you look at Ron Brown, he's been in this program 15 years. Let's talk about that coach staff. 132 years experience. Ron Brown, 15. George Darlington, 29 years. Turner Gill, 10. Built uh, Tenapore, the offensive line coach, 28. Dan Young, 19 years. I mean, that continuity is huge. You see Ron Brown there? You know where he played his college football? Where did Ron play? At Brown. Did he? Yeah. Gage couldn't haul that one in. Good coverage again by... Duan Gross. Ron Brown went to Brown University. He's uh, head coaching material one day as well. Oh, he is. Jamal Lord is capped that? off that 42-yard drive with a one-yard keeper. Another double-digit drive. That's the third one of the day, if I recall correctly. And that's what Frank Solich was talking about. That's what he wanted. That was uh, one of his big, uh, big keys. Multiple play drives. Here's a counter. Outlaw gives to Gilmore. And Zane gets a couple. For he is uh, bottled up by Manaya Brown. Always a lot of people to thank. Upstairs in the booth, our spotter, Tim Simmons. Mid-season form. The executive producer of college football <laughs> is Bill Borson. The coordinating producers, Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. Give you some more names in a moment. Outlaw on a draw. How fast is Nebraska's defense, even with the number twos in there? Did the ball come out? Uh, I don't. I think it did maybe after he was down. That play by Eric Crouch just broke the spirit of Missouri. Oh, it, it did. You talk about a momentum changer. That was the story. Case closed after that. Yeah. Today's game's been produced by Bob Steinfeld, as always, and directed by Kenny Miller. Kenny with the sniffles today, trying to battle through the flu, but... He played hurt. He did play hurt. He did. Our senior vice president of field operations, Andrea Berry. I want to thank both sports information offices at Missouri and Nebraska. These guys always do a great job in supplying us with all the information we could possibly want. Wow. Hasbrook making people miss. Oh, excuse me, that's Ben Cornelson, not Hasselbrook. Well, next week, Dave, we'll be in Manhattan, Kansas. And we'll see Kansas State, a great defense. Hill Roberson at quarterback, Josh Scobie at tailback. With uh, like, Scobie and, and, and Rock, they were the number one team in the country running, yeah. rushing the football. You know, the interesting thing about Nebraska, Drew, is they've led the nation in rushing 14 times, have never won the defensive rushing title. They've never been number one in that area, but they've won it offensively 14 times. That's amazing. Lord and right knocks him down. Missouri, I think, can build on this. And you say, how can you build on, on a loss? And, and I don't buy into that. And they're, they're going to lose 36 to 3 at least. But Missouri, 
for three quarters show they can go toe to toe with Nebraska and they have to finish drives you got to score points when you move the football which they did early right but they can, they can play defense now they're in a situation where they played too many snaps yeah and, and, and the difference in this football game was a Heisman hopeful and, and that great player made an unbelievably great play Rick Speed pretty shifty the former high school All-American you know, one thing that uh, we were talking to Coach uh, Pinkle, Gary Pinkle, about his his philosophy a little bit, and recruiting came up, and he said, you know, you want to recruit good kids that can run. Well, Aaron Crouch, what does he fit that to a T? Exactly what Coach Pinkle's talking about. And then, you know, his other comment is you don't want to make mistakes. You want to avoid mistakes. You don't want to, to uh, necessarily, you know, roll the dice on a kid and not have it pan out, because if you do that too many times, you, you're not going to compete with the upper echelons. Jeez. To the 20 yard line. Antoine Duncan perhaps saved the touchdown. Nebraska's on their third quarterback, Joe Christman's in there. I think it was RJ Jones that he ran over. Freewall. Freewall looks like he's one of those guys shot put with legs. You know, he swallowed a bowling ball and just gets thicker from there. Typical fullback bo body. They always have fullbacks, don't they? And they do. They have the no neck rocket machine fullbacks. <laughs> we always say they swallowed a bowling ball. Yeah, and get bigger from there, exactly. Chrisman tackled by Ferguson from behind. I like him. He's a good football player, number 20 in black. Absolutely. You know, they get themselves exactly what Coach Pinkle was talking about. Good kids that can run. He fits the t he fits the mold. And you need to get a lot of them because, you know, teams like Nebraska and Oklahoma, they've got a roster full of them. Davis. Will he get another chance? He's been close to the end zone a couple of times. I don't think so, though, because that's going to be the final play of the football game in all probability. I'll tell you, there was a collision, Prewalt and, and Doyle, who's a tough customer at linebacker where they really knocked heads in that final play of the game. Nebraska wins it 36 to 3 and no question the player of the game number seven Eric Crouch and he's with Jim Knox. Jim. That's right Drew the difference maker right here 95 yard touchdown take us through that play what was going on in your mind? Oh well I was a little uh, leery about the backside pressure and when it was coming pretty hard I just stepped up in the pocket I saw a little green backside and I took it and uh, really to be honest with you it's been about uh, four or five years maybe even six since I've ran that long so uh, it was a little tiring run, but it was well worth it. Yeah, we've seen some incredible runs by Eric Crouch in your career so far, but that had to be tops. Yeah, that really, I think, topped it off. You know, I, I felt good. I knew that uh, coming into this game that I'd have to make some big plays and probably do it on the ground. Are you a little out of breath at the end of the run? <laughs> I sure was. You notice that I didn't complete that two-point ver conversion, but, um, yeah, I was a little bit winded. We came back, did a great job, and it was all worth it. Uh, first half, you guys didn't have the ball much, but in the second half, started to wear that Missouri defense down. Yeah, I think that was our objective at halftime uh, we put a few things together and and we really just wanted to get our power game started we knew the first half that uh, it wasn't going as well as we wanted to we came out here uh, physical and focused and that's what got it done for us all right Eric congratulations on the big game and good luck next week against Iowa State Drew all right Jim thanks very much Unbelievable job by Eric Crouch. And here's some of the other highlights, Dave, today. Well, you know, he, he showed the elusiveness and the, and the violent cutting ability, the quickness, the speed. He is the total package. The other thing that he does now is, is he can throw the football. But this is the play where he avoids a safety. This is a signature play. Forever, Eric Crouch will be remembered by this jaunt right here, this journey to the end zone. He turned a football game around, turned a play against his football team that could have scored points into a play for his football team that scored points that turned the momentum of this game upside down. And he is, obviously, our Dr. Pepper player of the game. 120 yards in the air, 191 on the ground. And the 191, not only a new career high, but in terms of quarterbacks during the regular season, that's a new Nebraska record, 17 better than Jerry Godowski back in the late 80s. Went for Nebraska. The all-time mark came by Tommy Frazier against Florida. 199 in the Fiesta Bowl. One more time. You're going to see it, I imagine, uh, a few more times Boy. before this season's complete. You lose contain. 
he'll make you pay. And boy, did he make Missouri pay on this one. Once they lost contain it and lost their pass rush lane, he just took it to the house on them. Yeah. Tying up a little bit there. He is, he is starting to knot up a little bit, but what a run. That guy, Darren Dietrich, wasn't bad either today. 36-3 the final. We're back in a moment.